Well, g'day footy fans and welcome to season 2022. We've been hearing for months that footy's back, but we know it's not really back until country and suburban grounds around the nations open their change rooms, the jars of liniment, the bars, the canteens, and the barbecues. Oh, I can almost smell it, Phil. And that's the scene here today at the Painter Mobile for our round one clash between last year's Div 1 grand final sides. My name's Phil Hurd and mighty glad you've chosen to join us. I'm joined by a man who won four premierships as a coach, coached the state team five times in his third year as the voice of the Adelaide Footy League, Sean Jacko Jackson. Welcome Jacko! Oh, g'day Phil, great introduction, thanks for that. Let's don't go, let's don't put the viewers through that every too week. Too hard, too early, yeah. Great okay. to be here though, first round. It feels like it's a long time coming, mm. but you can just smell it, can't you? The sense of anticipation mm. in, Literally. in the audience here, yeah. Down oh, no, the bar, the, the I can smell. <laughs> yeah, we're in for a big day. Two teams, they've been powerhouses of the league in recent years, played in the two of the last three grand finals. We're expecting a big match with plenty of changes. We'll give you all the team listings, a full preview, interview with the coaches, and then the game itself. All thanks to Filming Footy, this is the Adelaide Footy League. Well, g'day folks. Last year, the Paynham and Norwood Union Football Club played in the final of Division One. Didn't quite get the chocolates, but at the end of the year, their coach moved on and a new coach was needed. And lo and behold, who put his hand up? Straight out of Woodville West Torrens and Norwood before that, Jeremy Cheney, and he joins me tonight. How are you, Cheney? I'm going very well, thanks, Sean. Thanks for having me. Yeah, great to have you. And as we pan around, I guess we'll have a bit of a look at the club. It looks fantastic, mate. How's your pre-season been? Look, the pre-season's been very solid. Uh, look, it was a, a big emphasis for myself to come in and, and make sure that the boys were fit. I think the uh, only thing I can control as a coach going into round one is how fit the group is. And uh, look, we undertook a pretty heavy running program early. Um, the boys probably a bit resistance at the start, but uh, <laughs> once they realised there was some benefit to what we were doing, they got on board really well. So we've had a great pre-season, really looking forward to round one this week. Good. Now I'm not sure what nickname to roll with, mate, so I'm going to roll with Fedder, but you tell me Aaron's one you, you do answer to. Aaron Bocken, oh, look, uh, you've obviously tapped into uh, to my old, my old uh, counterpart, Jay Sheedy, but uh, yeah, look, I, I get called all sorts, Sean, but uh, I've been called a lot worse, put it that way. <laughs> now listen. When you watched this show, this part of this show was recorded last week and I was put on the spot and asked to do Division 1 preview. And I've got to be honest with you, it's been very quiet and all I've heard from most clubs is, is who, who's been leaving, not who they've been getting. So on the back of what I heard you'd lost, I slipped you guys out of the fight. As I made my way to the car park tonight, Macca bailed me up and told me about who you are recruit. Yes. Tell our listeners, mate, who, who oh, you look, recruit it's, it's very exciting. Obviously, we did lose a lot of depth and talent from the group last year. But, um, look, we were fortunate enough to uh, bring in Brad McKenzie, who has obviously played a lot of league football yeah. at SANFL level. He's played 40-odd, 50-odd games at North Melbourne. So not Fantastic. only is he a quality footballer, but a really quality individual and, and one who's going to benefit our group moving forward. Uh, ben Sawford was, uh, is another midfielder we've got from South Adelaide. He spent a bit of time at Glenelg as well. He's chased by uh, every club in Adelaide, I reckon. He was he? pretty popular. <laughs> boy, so I was pretty happy to get uh, pen to paper when Ben uh, came in, but again, has an affiliation with the club, he works with some of the boys from the club, Lewis Clem, who you just met before, yep. um, and, and he again is another quality individual who I think will produce some really good footy. Uh, and the last one we managed to get in was Harry Viney, so Harry's come down from Lobethal, um, he played a fair bit of footy with Norwood early as a junior and, and did play some league footy at the time. Brother uh, of? No, uh, cousin of, Cousins. cousin of. Um, so he is the son of Jay for memory. Okay. Um, so Harry will be a really good addition to our forward line as well. Yeah, okay. Um, now, mate, been a while since you've been back or been in the Ammos. Last time was old 2016, Indians. correct. And you're playing against them this year? Correct. Will you be okay with that, mate? Will I'll that... be fine with that. No, I'm actually looking forward to it. Uh, I think it's round four we'll be uh, we are hosting them here. So it'll be, um, obviously there's a lot of guys I coach within that group. Mm. Um, they were quite young when I first got them. To see them develop where they are now has been fantastic. And yeah. I think Damien's done a great job with the footy club. But uh, I look forward to beating him in round four. <laughs> 
Now, if my memory is correct, back in those days, mate, you were actually still playing, still having a kick in the bees. Correct. Will you dust them off? Not happening. No, not happening. <laughs> not happening. Not happening. No, it won't be happening. I've got to tell you, the last time I saw Macca in a Goonzi was a pre-season game, and I said to him, you're pretty lucky the stripes go up and down. But you look like you've kept yourself in pretty good oh, nick, mate. So there oh, might be a spot for you if COVID gets hold of you. Potentially, you never know. Yeah, I won't rule anything out, Jacko, but not, not, on the, not on the cards at this stage. Okay, I've got to finish today by telling you a quick funny story story about uh, your skipper, who we were hoping to get on in, on camera tonight, and I know he's not here, but I bumped into him last week in Darwin. And for our listeners at home, we're going to pick, we're going to put a picture up, but on the Friday night, he plays in a band, B Sharp. Yes, correct. They were at a wedding at Port Elliot. He'd finished at two o'clock in the morning, journeyed to the Adelaide airport, on the plane at 6.30, landed at 10, played in the grand final at 1.30 in 35 degrees and 100% humidity at 2 a.m., he was still in the full banks attire and his boots. <laughs> and the boots. And the boots. It's funny because he's generally the last to come out of the change rooms because he's always using, I'm putting my boots on. Yeah. So <laughs> funny you've mentioned that, Jacko. You shouldn't need that one, mate. <laughs> oh, James, it's been great to catch up, mate. We, we wish you all the best. Uh, I know you'll bring something to the Adelaide Footy League on the back of where you've been the last few years, mate. And I'm, I'm hearing really good stories already out of the club, mate. So we wish you all the best and good luck. We look forward to seeing you round one this Saturday. Exactly right. Thank you very much. Really looking forward to it. Cheers, mate. Thanks, Jacko. Well, g'day folks, it's not far away now, the first game. In fact, it's only nine days away, and we are here tonight at the home of the Division One reigning premiers. And of course, I refer to the Prince Alfred Old Collegians Footy Club. Lucky enough to be joined by their senior coach, Craig Pitt. How are you, Pitty? Good, thank you. Thanks for having me. How's it been, mate, the summer as a reigning <laughs> coach? Did you walk a little bit taller? Uh, I don't think, I think we had a good couple of weeks there afterwards, right. but you've got to move on eventually, don't you? Oh, so. okay. I think we, um, <laughs> after a good couple of weeks, we put it on the back burner and back to work now, which is good fun. Now, are we okay standing this close, given that you've had a fair run <laughs> yeah. with COVID here, like yeah. everybody else? I think every club's in the same boat this year. It's going to uh. be challenging in more regards than one, but um, no, now that hopefully we can get it behind us a bit and move on during the season, but you never know. It's yeah. unpredictable. Now, no pressure, mate, but in the whole history of the Adelaide Footy League, mm -hmm. There's only been three clubs that have gone back to back. They are Goodwood Saints, who had a five year trot and a two year trot. Kilburn and who's the third one? James, help me out here. <laughs> who was it? Greek Camden. There you go. So, can you become the first college side to go back to back? Oh, who knows? I mean, it's not very easy, and COVID's not going to make it any easier for us. But, I mean, that's what you front up every year to do. Obviously, stats aren't in our favour, but. Be nice to replicate what Goody Saints did, go five in a row, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? But yeah. no, nah, winning one. Don't get ahead of yourself. Winning mate. one's hard enough, so we'll just try and win the first game, I think, and then we'll go from there. Well tell us about the preseason, mate. How's it been? Yeah, it's been really good. I think um, obviously COVID's uh, fluctuated our numbers on the track quite a lot, but we've had really good turnout from all the young school kids um, that have graduated and a few country boys that have come up that graduated last year and have come back to study. So they uh, reinvigorate the group and bring some youth back into the group and um, obviously they weren't here last year so come with new ideas and things that they've experienced themselves so it's great to have them and um, it's been really good it hasn't been too hot which has been lovely yeah, too. Yeah we've had a mild summer who of the young kids is very particular I know as a coach you, you yeah. get that one you think geez I'm gonna pick a, a diamond out of the rough who have you got for us? Well we've probably got a handful that are all impressive in their own right but um, there's a couple that are really excited me Tom Searles is one of them who's come from school I think he's vice captain of the first 18 last year He's got a lot of pace, which I'm probably jealous of, so that's probably why he excites me a bit. But then a lot of others, Tom Bromley's been great for us as well. He played centre-half back at school last year. A um, couple of country kids, Lockie Schultz, uh, Lucas Schultz, sorry, and Oscar Clark that have come up from Kybe Bolite. So great to have some more South East boys oh, up here. Oh, good Lord. Um, yeah, I'm biased in that regard. <laughs> So no, we've got plenty. I can keep listening them because we've okay. probably got five or ten that will play in our trial this weekend. And um, yeah, it's exciting to bring them through. Now, like all club, mate, you've had some players come in and some players leave. So before yep. we get on the players that have come in, tell us about the players you've left. Yeah, so we lost 
three of our leading goal kickers, which is pretty hard, but Tom Bartlett's retired. Yep. At this stage, we're always a sneaky chance to get him back. Play a few we, in the D's are easy. Yeah, I don't think he's got that in him. He's too competitive. <laughs> um, Jake, my brother, so Jake Pitt, he's gone to Geelong for the year. He's moved over there for work. Out of the um, family now? No, no. Out he, of the will, the old can, man's he will? He can stay in for now. He can stay in for now, as long as he comes back. Right. Um, Bryce Woolard, he's gone to Alice Springs. Um, Tyson Brazel's gone to North Adelaide to try his hand. I think he's played a league trial out there, which is good for him. Right. Lockie Charlton, the same. He's gone to Norwood. He's played a league trial out there, which is Terrific. great. Yeah. Um, so they're probably the major ones. Um, there's we're a gonna... few guys that are still tossing up whether they're going to play A grade or whether they're not okay. going to commit so much. But I'll say they're going to commit. So okay. The we're going to miss calling the Brazel Dazzle show. I know. I know. <laughs> One Maybe of our favourite lines. You might have to go to SNFL and commentate him there. JP, no, that, was his, that was, was his little call. We enjoyed it as well. So Yeah. Now tell us about the blokes, the, the new ones. I know you picked up an absolute yep. beauty in Chris Curran. Yes, yeah. So Chris Curran's, obviously his resume speaks for itself. Yeah. He's captain at Glenelg and yeah. um, in their premiership year. And he's just a terrific character. Um, sets his tone on the track still. He's... Hasn't lost a yard of pace, and wow. he's a, he's a great leader, obviously. So, him along with Jack, getting Jack Trango over a couple of years ago, really helps our younger kids develop, which um, is really important for us. We like to keep our own and and grow them, I guess. So yep. he's played an important role in that. And Sam Buckham's probably the other big name that yeah. we got from Norwood. Uh, he played a few games with us probably two or three years ago, I think, probably three years ago, um, when he was on the list at Norwood and wasn't quite getting a reserves game. Okay. I think he's had a bit of trouble with injury over the last couple of years, so I think he's just come out, um, get away from the rigorous five-day-a-week training at Sanford level and yep. just try and get some enjoyment back in his football. So it's been great to have him out as well. Fantastic, mate. Who have you got round one? I oh, know. Paynham. We've yeah, got you round, round one. Premiers. Oh, you guys tell us. Yeah, we've that got one. that first game, so yeah, really looking no, forward so to that Paynham one. at Paynham. I think they've beaten us there the last two years in a row, so we'll be keen to... Hopefully get one back at Paynham. It was a so. cracking game uh, last year, wasn't it? Depends what side of the fence you're on. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't so excited like you were. Now you've got yes. one trial to go, mate. Who have you got this week in the trial? Uh, so we're playing Adelaide Uni in a trial. Obviously they yep. unfortunately went down last year, but um, it'd be a great hit out. We're just playing on their oval not far from Park 9, which is great. Um, so yeah, it'd be good, good to get a run in the leg before we uh, hit round one. Well, we... Appreciate your time coming out, Pity. Looks like you've got some good numbers here tonight, mate. Yeah. For your, Obviously, the season can't be too far away and all of a sudden. Do you actually ask them for the doctor certificate to show that they actually genuinely have got COVID? No, you I trust, just trust, I trust them. Enough. Oh, yeah. you're, you're a better man than I'm me. I'm not their father. <laughs> mate, we wish you all the best. No pressure. You'll be the first college side to go back to back oh. if you can do it. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. See you, Pity. And welcome back, everyone. Thanks to the two coaches, Jeremy Cheney and Craig Pitt, for their time through the week and putting up with Jacko for a few minutes and sharing with their thoughts. We're back up at the commentary position high up on the balcony here at Payne and Mobile. Thanks for joining us. Let's get into the Ooh. two teams because there's a fair <laughs> bit to talk about. Just to give you some context, Payne and Norwood Union merged Payne and Norwood Union. Six senior premierships so far, 2019, their first Div 1 flag over Prince Alfred, also won the women's flag in Div 2. Only one of two clubs, Old Ignatians the other, who have a team in Div 1 in both the men's and the women's this season. You can see, uh, if we have a look at what they've done in recent years since they got promoted to Division 1 in 2015, four grand finals in seven seasons, uh, three bridesmaids, but 2019 got that premiership. So that's what they bring into this season, but boy, oh boy, are there some changes today, Sean Jackson. There are indeed, Phil. It's, um, <coughs> well, it's, <laughs> it's not the pain of old, that is for sure. Not the old as in 2021. If we go through the team list, uh, and that'll come up on the screen in a minute, we'll see that uh, there's only five lads playing today that played in the grand final for pain and, I'll, and I'll, I'll mention their names. John Giannini, the, the skipper, he stays, which is terrific. Played in a, a pre-season Grand final up in Darwin. Matt Nye, Louis Clem, Todd Pinoho and Jack O'Leary. And that's it, mate, five. Mm. And if you look, what's even more damning for them, I think, is if you look at last year's, and we haven't got a, a slide for this, but last year's forward line, the front six, gone. Midfield, ruck, gone. Um, now, they replaced their ruckman with Cam 
Milne this year, who's been a terrific player in the Amateur League, hasn't played here for two or three years. But unfortunately for them, he's out injured today. A late omission. Or it may, it may not be injury, it may be COVID. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got to get a bit of that, aren't we? Well, was named 24 hours ago, was not fronting up this afternoon. Yeah. So I'm not too sure how they're going to go, to be honest mm. with you. It's going to be... And, and neither. Hey, look, they've got a couple of very good ins from yep. the SNFL. Ben Sawford, um, Brad McKenzie... Harry Viney comes to them courtesy, I think, Lobethal and the Hills League. Yep. So they've got some good ins, but... There's a, I mean, this is where their B grade and their depth is now getting their A grade opportunity. They may, And we're going to see some names that we might have seen in patches. Um, Sonozo, um, where was the Ruckman? Webb. Lachlan Webb we saw almost, I think, on debut last year. Impressed for a youngster. Yeah. He might have to learn pretty quickly. Yeah, I think he's training out at North Adelaide, actually, so a bit stiff not to get a game as my mail today in the reserve, so I'm not sure how much they'll see of him. Um, Mateus is an interesting one, came to paint him from CBC in Division 4 or 5. He's now um, being looked at by Glenelg, so I think this is their, a development year. So he'll, he'll play most of the year for paint yep. But, um, yeah, a massive, massive turnover of players. Uh, you know, you just got to consider the strength last year in the front half of the ground was was very impressive. Impressive, and when you take out Sam Bartlett, um, so, sorry, Sam Barnett, Liam Davis, Brett Ansell, Dylan Pippett, Nick Jolly, Callum Bartlett, all gone. Yeah, it's plus, huge. Plus the ruck, Sam Balderson, Christian Rook, and Anthony Giannini. Um, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a challenge for them, I think, Phil. Speaking of uh, challenges. Uh, defending a premiership is always an interesting challenge, and that's what the princes of pa uh, Prince Alfred have before them. Let's have a look at their history. The college, 150 years ago, was established. The uh, footy co old collegians, 96 years ago, centenary, not too far. The third oldest club in this competition. And the story I love about Prince Alfred, 1928, St. Peter's came in. They asked to be demoted so they could play their rivals. <laughs> um, they won their first flag, believe it or not, on their 90th anniversary of the school in 2016 and backed it up. Up, of course with a second last year if you have a look at uh, their recent time since coming in in 2016 look pretty good seasons even the year they finished six was nine and nine haven't had a losing season and look they were a step above last year um, heavy premiership favorites and they delivered on the big day so jacko we have a look at the team set up for prince alfred how are they looking this afternoon yeah so i'll go with a couple of things first of all we need to acknowledge the fact that this is their seventh year in division one so that's their longest stretch by the length of the straight their success rate in the last 12 years is staggering as a club <coughs> um you know when, when you consider that Across the last 12, 12 years, 11 of those grand finals have had one college side in them. Wow. But there has yet to be a grand final where two college sides have played against each other. I think this year is a realistic chance, and it's the two old schools, Prince Alfred and St. Peter's, <laughs> are a realistic chance. Wow. Not only that, there's only three clubs in the history of Division One in the Adelaide or the Amateur League that have gone back-to-back. -back. It's not easy to do, is it? No. Well, and, and no college side has ever done it. Yep. So uh, got a lot going. Look, their their list of outs is nowhere near as as telling as what Paynham's is. I think there's 12 playing today that played in the grand final. And you look at the names, mate. You look at the midfield. Um, Cam Giles, being named captain this year, has taken over from uh, per Perryman out the back pocket. Cam Giles, Hyde, Hayden Jolly, Jack Trengove, Lockie McNamara. Well, let me tell you, that, that could be your first ruck in yeah. the state side. That's how good that, that, yeah. that line is. I mean, we salivated watching them play last year, and we get to do it again this year, which is uh, fantastic, but bad news for opponents. Yeah, the, the change for them um, is also at the front half, though. They've lost a lot of goals out of the front half. So if you consider the man we love to call, he's out at North Adelaide. Um, he mentioned him before with the funny name, uh, Brazil. Oh, Tyson yes, Brazil Dazzle. Yep, so the Brazil Dazzle show is no longer. Tommy Done. Bartlett, also yes. gone. He was always a highlight reel yeah. as well. Yeah, um, and there's one other whose name escapes me. So <clears throat> I think it's 130 goals out of their forward line gone. So so, so we could be seeing a nil all draw <laughs> with no, no forwards <laughs> returning today. Well, that's exactly right. <laughs> Neither side. I mean, Robinson certainly played some time forward last year, and as did Mitch Wicks. And I think the coach... Uh, Pity is going to have to spend a fair bit of the time forward. He he gives them a, some some class in the front half, and he played most of the year there last year anyway. But um, I think they'll they'll need him in the front half, and their back half looks pretty sound. And as I said, the midfield looks very very strong. So 
it'll be a test for Payneham's midfield. They've got Sawford and uh, Mackenzie that have come Ooh. in into their midfield. They don't have their number one ruckman. No, that's that's. It was always going to be a challenge for the Falcons. Take out your ruckman. And it just becomes a bigger one. And we'll be fascinated to see how that, that's filled. Uh, just to give you what's happened at Paynham Oval so far today. And that, this big grey game is going the distance and then some. Um, in the Seas, and Prince Alfred have dominated both. In the Seas, Prince Alfred 14-21. Uh, that is 105. Uh, defeated Paynham 3-3-21. So that's an 84-point win to start the day. And in the Bs at the moment, it's the Prince's 13-10. That's uh, 88 Paying them 5-3-33, so about a 55-point win. Um, of course, Princes, what's they have five teams they across do, the yeah, league this yep, year? Yep, they do. It's going to be a challenge. I think any club that's putting five teams out in the park is a challenge at the best of times. You throw in the COVID variable that's mm. inevitably going to come in at every club this year. I would think that there is a real realistic chance that some sides may have to forfeit at some stage this year if they get a run of COVID. But, hey, the new rule helps, doesn't it? The, the new rule, do you like the new rule, Phil? The uh, the, uh, the, the play up. Last, I mean, not, it's not last touch, last possession. Last possession, yeah, yeah. And that's always a distinguishment you've, you've got to make, that you've got to be kicking it or handballing it untouched out of bounds for it to be a turnover. Look, I uh, called Sandful when that came in. First couple of games it was weird, and then you just got used to it. Yeah, and I think it's actually a pretty good rule. Keeps the it's not probably great for commentators because you have less stoppages, but overall for the game, probably pretty good. The one that I do like at the B's and C's is the level playing thing. At, it's not going to be an A grade level because everyone's going to move up to fill the holes. But if that leaves big holes at the C's, okay, let's get around that and let's get guys playing, even if in tricky circumstances. Yeah. So just to clarify, both of those, I'm not sure we made that real clear, but that's not happening at A grade level. The last position. Correct. That's B's and C's on the back of. We're worried about the number of volunteers and boundary umpires. But the other one that you mentioned late there, Phil, was um, evening of sides. And that's just C grade level, was it? I believe so. And yeah. look, that's because that's where that's where we're going to have the problem. B's, you'll have C's coming up. Yep. Um, so look, is it a problem? Yes. Are we going to try and live with it? Yes. What's the silver linings? We're probably going to see a lot of younger people, or older people maybe, ask to step up. At short notice. Yeah, and for so sure. We'll, commentators we'll alike. Com well, commentators, <laughs> hopefully not, because I hope you don't get COVID, and I certainly don't want to get it myself. Um, although these days, to be honest, mate, it's probably a case of when, not if, with the numbers that we're seeing. So the Bees have concluded, and it was, as mentioned, a pretty good win, 55 points. Just might get your thoughts. With coin toss not too far away. We're supposed to start in two minutes. Um, the other games on today and where you think the teams are placed overall, as our Div yeah, 1 sure. expert, Brighton and Goodwood. Yeah, I think this will be a beauty. That's at Brighton, isn't is it? Is it Brighton? Yeah. Uh, look, I've, I've tipped Goodwood to win it this year on the back of they're being they being the most stable a grade mm. side in the competition they don't seem to have lost many and they've picked up a few not high profile in comparison to what Paynham and um prince alfred have done but um good solid snfl players that'll add to their list so I, on the back of that i guess i have to go good with when you look at the teams you can see they're a net improvement with the outs and ins the others We'll, we'll wait and find out. Old Ignatians into Div 1 for the first ever time. They're rewarded with a, a trip up to Tea Tree Gully. Of course, they played each other a fair bit in Div 2 in recent years. How do you think the Old Iggies would enjoy the, the high level of Division 1? Well, once again, Old Iggies, um, I think I mentioned this in the show during the week, that if you're coming up from Division 2 to Division 1, you want to hang on to your group as best you can and then add to it. They've lost some good players out of that side. Their recruiting's been pretty good. They picked up Christian Rook from from Paynham. They've also got Anthony Wilson um, if he doesn't Actually, play for Port. Bad. Although he was best player yesterday for Port, so I'm not sure how much they'll see of him. Yeah. Um, but back at Teacher Gully, Alex McKay, first time as a coach. Playing coach, your first game, let me tell you, it's difficult as a playing coach, so I hope he's got good bench support, but I'll go for Teacher Gully there, Phil. Alright, I might just quickly mention the umpires while you sort out some stats with Lockie. The field umpires today, um, Anthony Wesley and Andrew Crosby, so some he's good sandful experience oh, sorry. Um, in in there, yeah. uh, boundary umpires Andrew Jenke and Peter M McMullen, and goal umpires Dominic Spano and Lee Burns waving the calicos today. Um, the con 
conditions are, I often say glorious when I come out, and that's because I just love calling this level of footy. But the ground looks magnificent, blue sky with a wisp of cloud, maybe a little bit cooler than I would have liked, but just a, a freshing breeze. Very pleasant conditions today. Yeah, slight breeze. Phil, um, more up here than down on the ground yeah. for some reason. We're, we're in a little tunnel here. Um, but, yeah, you wouldn't be disappointed to roll up today and find this as your weather for round one. Um, no excuses for any side today in, in, on the back of weather, that is for sure. Well, we always talk about setting up a live stream and starting on time. We <laughs> haven't had the coin toss yet, and we should be underway. But other quick two games to give you a thought about these two clubs. Uh, Port District hosting Glenunga to get us back underway. Yeah, this one this one, I'm 100% confident on my, my prediction, and the Port Districts will win that, and they'll win that comfortably. I'm, I'm concerned about Glenunga. Okay. Um, I don't know uh, that they've, they've got the side to compete in Division 1. They lost four or five good players out of their group and haven't really recruited much so I think it's going to be a real challenge for them and Port Districts conversely they're recruiting the best it's been for a long long time the two Gray boys mm -hmm. Sam and Tom Gray fantastic Tom Schmush out of Woodville West Tyrone so I think Port Districts will win that well, there's Over Andrew the Phil Toss, Phil. Crosby and... Uh, the, the Phil Toss, I mean the, the ball toss. The coin toss, the even. Coin toss. <laughs> you can, the ball toss will be shortly and you will have that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, we're right in the middle of it, aren't we? Yep. The uh, two field umpires I mentioned, Anthony Wesley with the cap and Andrew Crosby bringing out his... What's he doing? They've got no coin. <laughs> They've got no coin. Well, you go rock, paper, scissors, That's don't you? what he's done, left hand or right hand. Anyway, however it's been done, Paynham have won the toss and... Have, Am I right in saying we, we thought the breeze was going from right to left? Yes. He's one and is going to the right. So he's going, if there is a breeze, and maybe it's not much, he's going to the right. So So who won the toss? Paynham Norwood Paynham. Union won the toss and elected to go to the the city end. Okay, well, that'll be interesting to see. I've got a photo coming up. Now, what's on this? <laughs> so that's the, the captain of Paynham um, just bumped into him at 2 a.m. up in Darwin after he won the premiership with Banks. So. One of the real good guys of the competition, John G and Innie. Um, so that's the that's the second level in Darwin, and they are looking for um, a, a promotion, I think, aren't they? The Banks. They team? are. They are indeed. Yes. Uh, so one one last game left in Div One. There was the a. Rock. Oh well, we're going to talk about it. Saints and Rocks. Saints and Rocks. Yeah. Well, once again, I'm reasonably confident that Saint Peter's will get the job done there. Phil, yourself. Oh look. I um, yeah, I, I'm going to follow your lead, Jacko, okay. for a while. Maybe I've learnt my <laughs> lesson from previous dipping comps. We're not far away. We do want to thank our sponsors. To today, our Banner Crew is our match day sponsor. Go to the bannercrew.com.au for all your signage and banner needs. So tell Jason that we sent you. We're going to have the Sip and Save scoreboard and around the grounds. Of course, Sip and Save, one hour delivery, seven days a week. The interchanges, thanks to the Wayfield Clinic, our boundary rider, and we do miss your Lambo today, Police Credit Union, uh, with the cross the huddles and the interviews. Our uh, stats, Lockie is back um, with the Dartfish stats and, of course, the Simon Black Academy with the replays. And, Jaco, after the game, you're going down onto the ground to do our post-match awards. We don't have just one award. We don't have just two awards. We've got three this yeah, year. Yeah, it's, it's almost like every player wins a prize today, Phil. <laughs> it It'll is. be easier to round up those that don't get an award and talk to them. So but we've got, thanks to New Balance, the best on ground, the Simon Black Academy play of the game. That's mine to try and work out. And this is what I think you like, the Team Player Award. Look after your mate. Yeah, so we're, that's on the back of Mosley's sponsorship. Mm. You know, it's responsible drinking, uh, responsible behaviour. So we're going to pick a player who we think best epitomises the looking after his mate or mates out on the ground today. Well, every pre-season feels like it takes an eternity. Yeah. You, you enjoy October, November leading to Christmas, but then when you start seeing other levels of football being played, you're just hanging out for yours to begin. Um, it's been a tricky off-season for many clubs, just the player movements, managing COVID, getting set, but it's all done and dusted now. We are set to go. Looking forward to this one. A, a final tip and a margin, Jacko. Yep, OK. Just before I do that, one quick thing. I want to sh shout out to uh, all the clubs that have looked after our cameraman and we've... Uh, yes been really looked after today right across the league so fantastic to see all clubs getting on board with that my tip today is prince alfred old collision by 32 points yeah i reckon i'll add a couple of goals to that and go maybe 45 thanks to the banner crew our match day sponsor match day live 
Pan Am Nord Union, the Falcons in white. Prince Alfred Old Collegians, the reigning premiers in maroon. And to get us underway for season 2022, it's Sean Jackson. Well, here it is, folks. First bounce. What's a throw up, actually? Cam up against um, Lockie Webb from Paynham. And it's Paynham who get first kick out of the centre square, courtesy of the new recruit, Ben Sawford. Straight from South Adelaide Footy Club. Wow, what a fairy tale start that would have been for young Ben. Terrific clearance out of the centre. Unfortunately, we weren't able to keep it on track and it's the first score of the game goes to Paynham. They're actually kicking to the left, Phil. So they are. the wind is going that way. Perryman it is. Yep. The soldier who brings the ball out long is heading in the direction of Riley Robinson. He wasn't able to take it. And good defence there from Paynham. Yeah. Sees the ball spilling out of bounds, Phil. Yeah, well, that was my fault. Obviously, the camera was at a different angle than what I thought and clearly threw me off. It would it makes perfect sense. You win the toss, you go with the breeze or whatever we had to decide whose decision that was. The throw-in comes in. Uh, that's Cam Giles with the tap down as far as his rover, but no movement out of that. Another stoppage. Andrew Crosby will come in. Looking around, Jacko, again, we've got the assortment of footwear, some white, some aqua blue, some bright orange. Great to see that hasn't changed. Yeah, I like the aqua blue. That's something aqua I haven't seen a lot of. Different. Mitch Larson gets the clearance. It is partially smothered, though. The Falcons hunting in packs create the stoppage well, inside it's on the centre square. It's on. There's a bit of heat in there in the middle. Not as many plays as you would have thought remembering last year's grand final, but a couple have come in a bit ansty. Finally glad to probably tackle an opponent as opposed to a teammate through the pre-season. Holding on penalty by the umpire, and Princes will go forward for the first time today. Free kick to Riley Robinson. And I Riley's think. had the, uh, the the crew cut leading into 2022. He has. He goes long to full forward, just goes over the top of the uh, play and play, uh, Prince Alfred player, but ends up with Sam Buckham. He can't do much with it, and in the end, the ball spills out of bounds. Here to see of Oscar Clark, and I don't remember having called his name before. So Sam Buckham is one of the um, the new recruits. Not a lot on Prince Alfred's list from Norwood. Okay, so good pick up. Now boundary run by stepped in ten metres to be able to accommodate for the breeze. No one able to take the ball cleanly. Oscar Clark does it best of all, but once again the umpire steps in to say, "Listen, boys, clear some space." Number 30, Jordan Neal. Looks like he's taking the ruck work for Prince Alfred up against Webb. Neal it is. Pushes it forward in the direction of number 12, who I don't have on my sheet. We'll try no. and sort oh, that Oh, yes. Out. Number 12 is Lockie McNamara. Ah, Lockie. He, he got a, a, a late jumper change from 22 to 12. Yeah, correct. Normally wears 27, so that threw me out. What a fantastic first ruck it is, Tay, for Prince Alfred. So, same spot. Ball thrown up. This time, Prince Alfred first hands on it. Jordan Neal. But, Phil, you take over because all I'm calling is restart Stop after just, restart. Yeah. Well, it's what you'd expect, opening minutes of uh, of a season. Yep. No team is going to give away any easy positions. Thrown in front of the 50-metre arc. Pretty much, I think, in front of the Princes fans there. Of course, last time we were here, that little bit was a construction site, but the unisex change rooms have now been completed. Payton will kick it forward right in front of us now. Picking this up is Tom Sumner, but a hard tackle. Oh, and a little bit of a head rub. <laughs> Harrison Viney in his first game, yeah. number 26 for Painter, making yeah. his presence felt. He's got the haircut I just don't get, the one where you do the very short unders and the leave it long at the top. Run out of money, Phil, that's all that is. <laughs> Related to the Viney family, um, son of Jay, I think. Quite the footy name. Um, so we're back in the middle, and again, no, well, we're back in the, the stoppage. And uh, Lockie Webb is doing the ruck duties at the moment. No one really getting on top too much. Umpire Andrew Crosby has found a free. Going to go the way of Benny Sawford. He's had a couple of early touches. He's got no one on the mark. He realises this and he is off. Kicks it to the hot spot. Good kick, Laid Phil. out strong mark. Good kick, Phil. That's travelled yep. 40, 50 metres. 40, 50, not I mean 40, 50. I mean 42, 50. Yep. Beautiful. And a nice hole opened up for the full forward, didn't it? Did indeed. This is a Lockie Matai, so we thought might get a run and ruck, but he provides a tall lead and with some pace, got away from Will Darwood probably too easily. No one filled the hole. In fact, no one stood the mark. So a bit of a mental lapse from Princess to get us underway. Yeah, Will Darwood only trained the three times before this game to fill, so well, hadn't had the greatest pre-season. He's a very good cricketer for Princess, but it's all about Lachlan Matthias. He gets the first goal of 2022 for our broadcast right down the middle. And, um, gee, we thought Falcons would be flattened. Of course they're going to get the first goal. 
Yeah, he filled out a little bit too, I reckon, from last year, Phil. He's out at, uh, we mentioned before, a league club, I think, is at North Adelaide, and just presented beautifully, but it's uh, it's Sawford who's impressing early, got the first clearance, and that, that kick was an absolute beauty, so he's certainly making his mark right off the bat, and in the middle with him, Matt Nye and also Brad McKenzie. So not a bad first ruck for Bainham as well. We've got a real battle of some impressive players in the centre of the ground. And up they go again. Cam Giles, first hands. Comes to that man again. Um, Sawford, he dishes it out to Matty Nye. He long, heads to the half forward long. Taken by the skipper. Ends up with Oscar Clark. Out the back is good footy by Prince Alfred. Although this time they're forced under a little bit of pressure. On the left foot and paint a mark well. Just inside 50, go to full forward. Unfortunately for Paynham, they can't get it. And Hugo Kelly, it is, dangerously switches in in this corridor, keeps it alive. Look out! Look out! I'm not sure who that was. 29, I haven't got him on my sheet uh, either, Phil. That's a good point. 20. See if we can find out. Was 26. it 26, was it? I beg your pardon. That's Harrison Viney we yep. mentioned before. Saw the haircut before I saw the number. Yeah. <laughs> And a great turnover, wasn't it? But a really yep. risky kick back into the corridor by Prince Alfred. And, and they've got their work cut out from earlier. Payne and Norwood Union 1-2. Prince Alfred yet to score, Phil. Thanks to Wadefield Clinic on the interchange. Captain Jonathan Giannini, fresh from the Premiership and the night out with Jacko and Darwin. He's <laughs> <laughs> rested and ready to come back in. Dirty when, you, when you're the skipper and you've got to start on the pine, G. I'd have a word to... Yeah. That's a I'd have a word to Fettuccini sacrifice. about that. So this time they found Drangrove again. This time unopposed. Gets it on. I think that's Pitt. Mac McNamara, oh, I reckon. McNamara, yep. He's kicked it into some space. But the pain of Nord Union defence working hard there is Sab Boa. He's going to go across field, across halfback. It works. Finds the target. Good pace, Phil, wasn't it? Yeah, Maxi Wagner's got it. And the, they clear across. Bouncy ball defensive 50. Might want to get the kick away here, which they eventually do. Off to the outer hill. Good target in Cooper Young. Yeah, that was Brad McKenzie on the left foot. Not sure if he is a left footer, but that was nice and composed. Didn't rush his work there. So, once again, first game player. Off some hands towards that outer boundary, what I call the sort of, I call it the Harndorf Hill because if you keep going, that's why that's sort of where you'll end up. Jeez, you've got to go for a while. You've got though. to go for a while <laughs> to get to Harndorf. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> but, um, oh, they've got a couple of people there under the trees with some signage. Yep. Join their afternoon a local footy. I think everyone's enjoying just getting out there and having a run. A quick so hand pass from... So that was McKenzie that gave the handball and then got it back on the left foot again. So he's a left footer. Dowd has it now. He keeps it alive. Although Payne once again, um, Matthias. Smalls are there. There's plenty of heat from the Payne of small forwards. Pain, uh, Prince Alfred struggling to clear the ball out of their back half with any real efficiency at this stage. And it's still alive for Payne, although that <laughs> was a bit ambitious and ends yep. up going out, out of bounds. But what I've liked so far from Payne, I and mean, we're only... What are we, seven and a half, nearly eight minutes gone? Is that the pressure in the front half of the ground has been really good? Prince Alfred haven't been able to take it away with any real yeah. ease at this stage. One of the telltale signs of a team is on is how hard their forwards defend. And yep. uh, so far, good marks to Payne and Nord Union on that. Princes have had a couple of Ford 50s rebounded relatively easy. It is with Princes going down the outer side. It's sort of was uh, working its way down that boundary line. Uh, Mitch Weeks eventually couldn't keep it in. Thrown in front of the scoreboard, the sip and save scoreboard this year. The Falcons are paying them Norwood Union 128. Princes, Prince Albert Old Collegians yet to score. I've got to say, uh, as um, Louis Clem makes his way to the interchange for Payne, fantastic to see him back playing. He's had a couple of really bad years with injury. Uh, played last year, but was certainly affected by his previous injuries and it's he looks like he's running on top of the ground that so that's good Payne, uh, Prince Alfred now on the far side of the ground looking for Trengove in the middle of the pack trying to do it all Trengove taking the marks and what a, what a fantastic season he had last year clearly the best player in the competition won the medal won the best on ground in the grand final won the premiership there's not much he didn't do last year Trengove yeah, if, uh, look, if we were giving it to the best player every week, he would have a collection of dartfish beanies from the boundary. Talk about audacious kicks. McNamara. That was almost the reverse banana, I think. Oh, check side, of course. We're in South Australia, not banana. And, um, yeah, missed absolutely everything. No score yet for Payne of Norwood Union. We're about nine minutes into this contest. A difficult kick. He probably should have gone with the snap rather than the banana. Um, it would have brought it back in more towards the face of the goal, but uh, at least he's had a go. Well, 
Ben Vidic in the back pocket for Paynham now. Searching forward. Has G in any short if he wants to use him? Says no. I'm going to go long down the line. All the numbers are in favour of Prince Alfred. And that's a charge over the back from Cam Giles, the newly appointed skipper. And um, Theo, if you can remember his last name, Phil, number uh, 20 uh, centre. About 30 seconds. Theodorakopoulos. Theodorakopoulos. Did, did well to stand under the footy with Cam Giles bearing down on 100 mile an hour. Boundary throw in. <laughs> it's a bit short for the ruck. And in the end, some hard tackling. Jonathan Giannini inflicting a little bit of pain there on his McNamara. opponent. And McNamara who shrugs it all off, gets up and goes again. If that's a matchup. That's going to be a great matchup this afternoon to keep an eye on. I'm actually trying to work out if Trangove has a regular opponent or not. Haven't sorted as yet. I don't think he has a tagger, which, well, if nope. they can work out a way to get him to him, could spell trouble. Not at the moment. McKenzie Slee with the kick. To the 40 metre mark, outside, spills front and square though were Paynham. They have the numbers, needed a better handball on this occasion though. Opens it up for Slee, he's tackled straight away. Got the kick, so no penalty. Now here come Paynham Norwood Union. They charge through the middle, Cooper Young with a long kick towards 50, but Adam Perryman, captain last year, gets in the way. And finishes with the left foot as he normally does. He hits Cam Giles, the new skipper. Beautiful kick to the far side of the ground. Ends up with Mackenzie Slee. He now brings it back inboard to Trengove. Searches for options in front. He's got Pitt, the captain, coach, or the coach, I should say, Alex, not to go to him. Was it a good decision? In the end, no. I think it might have been Mitch Larson, perhaps, who had that shot. Couldn't quite see the number. But it uh, doesn't matter. It ends up with Patrick Sanzo, because that is another out in the fall by Prince Alfred. And they are yet to score and we are nearly 12 minutes into the first quarter wouldn't have picked that no. one goal we, we thought it might be low scoring and it's proven to be thus far Paynham had the best of the opening seven or eight minutes as that wind has changed direction we're now Dan Wind of the barbecue and it is quite overpowering let me say <laughs> <laughs> 55 chicken and chips thanks <laughs> exactly right gladly we've already eaten Trangove again with a clearance this one is high to 30 metres out good mark who marked that that was a strong mark under a fair bit of pressure yeah back line's been very very impressive playing in the early days I know but wow we so Bauer collects it in the back 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 pocket not too far from my car there <laughs> I'm hoping for not too many of that one, the b reverse banana that didn't work out, got pretty close to it. Oh, there's a lot of maroon around here at the moment. They should get it out, but it's tough tackle coming in from Jacob Campbell, who's uh, had a couple of impressive pieces of play thus far. He's got a free kick on the defensive 50. Sizes up. Some options. Comes down the balcony wing to the appreciation of locals. Dow with a... How many times has he done that at Sandfall and Adelaide Footy League level? Puts up the big mitts, takes down the big grab. Well, he's gone short, and there should have been <laughs> should have been marked. The kick was actually fine, but unfortunately, Edward Murdoch just made a meal of it in the end. It spills, and lucky not to get unlucky not to get a free kick for head high though. Matthias with a left hand palm puts it beautifully down for um, Theo. Theo, he did tackle. Just say Theo, we'll be fine. <laughs> Theo will be okay. Now Giannini shrugs off the tackle. Beautiful handball into the corridor. He has Todd Panojo and he lowers his eyes nicely. Hits up Ben it's Sawford. He's looking for a, a beautiful hole open up in the forward line. He just needs big Lockie Webb to lead. He doesn't. So he ends up having to go wide. Young Lockie Webb, you're going to learn from that, mate. Big, beautiful hole for you to lead into then. But that, anyway, they've worked it around the boundary nicely. Cooper Young has now hit up um, Jacob Campbell. So, nice transition to play. But uh, once again, the forward line is functioning very nicely for Paynham at the moment. They're certainly putting the Prince Alfred Old Collisions under a fair bit of pressure. Campbell already one behind this afternoon. So, difficult shot. He's just probably 25 degree angle he's a right footer he's got the breeze over his right shoulder though can he keep it online I think he has he has indeed and well if you're sitting at home wondering how pain am I going to look this year Phil ignore anything I said before yep. the game I did say it with the uh, the caveat that I really didn't know enough about some of the young players they'd recruited well 
15 minutes in, great start. Paynham Northern Union, two goals. Two, Prince Alfred, yet to score. Yeah, early days, and Prince... Paynham are kicking with the breeze, but the breeze is non-consequential. And the Falcons, impressive start. A difference, a few more inside 50s, really good kicking inside 50, and converting opportunities. We're back in the middle. Rucks go to it. And that wasn't too long ago. That was a cricket pitch <laughs> that Webb just got slammed. Oh, Giannini just got slammed into. Almost exactly in the inner circle of the T-Saws. A clearance to Paynham Norwood Union and a market centre half forward. Here comes the worm burner kick. This sets a task. Picking it up is Clem. He's tackled straight away without the ball, says umpire. Wow, we. And I'm not sure we got the dartfish replay on that one. Wow, what did you think, Phil? Did you think it was a free kick? Um, well, let's have a look. Let's go to the dartfish replay. Up oh, just it's a gone. tad late. Just come back a little bit early. Never Andrew. mind. Let's get our eyes on the kick here because this could be a hat trick to open the season for the Falcons. Clem Beautiful. starts right. Will it come back like a Dawson special? It does. They're three from three on the set shots, the Falcons. They are 3 2 20. All donuts for Princes. And uh, that is on the sip and save scoreboard. One hour delivery, seven days a week. Yeah, we'd like to see that tackle again if we could, but um, I did mention Louis Clem before, was a terrific player a couple of years ago, so he started the game in great fashion and looks in good nick, so be a pretty handy acquisition for Payne in the condition he's in. We're going back into the middle of the ground, and it's Lockie Mateus, who's up against Cam Giles. No, no, we've got um, Jordan Neal in. Some interesting stats. Paynham, 12 tackles to Prince Alfred's four at this stage. Sawford has had four clearances. Make that number five. He is on fire. Get some money on him now if you can for BOG. It's early. Um, now we're in the forward who, pocket. Who decides the BOG? Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paynham able to relieve this ball. But once again, they're pressured. But well, they're sitting up nicely behind the ball, Paynham, and... I'll tell you what, Jay Cheedy would be taking all credit for this. Jeremy Cheedy's been with him the last couple of years, likes the player. Rolling diamond defence behind the ball, and it's been effective to this stage. I wonder if he learned all this at Athelstan while he was there coaching a Div 2 Premiership. Salford has been in absolutely everything, including that little possession of play, which was handballed out of bounds. Yeah. Um, will be a throw-in out can, on the hill. You can see why he's keenly sought after by a lot of clubs. He thought Foss Camden thought they had him. He's boss is actually the coach of Foss Camden and he didn't go there so <laughs> good luck hanging on to your job son. That's it. About to say football discrimination doesn't count does it? <laughs> <laughs> well that one has yet to uh, come through the oh, media. I reckon, but that, I reckon that has happened a fair bit that people's jobs have often depended on what's happened on a footy field but that's a story for another day. Right now we've got a fascinating first quarter here. Hope you're enjoying it. Uh, thanks to um, the Banner Crew uh, match day sponsor. Payne and Union really haven't got a clearance here or a possession, but they've almost willed it inside forward 50. That's a good way of describing that passage play, Phil. That is exactly correct. And uh, we've got another stoppage. Gee, they're tough at the, booty, at the footy, aren't they, Payne? And they are, they are hungrier for the contest at the moment than Prince Alfred. Look all over the ground. They're first to the ball. Generally, here they go again. This time, courtesy Bin Vidic around the corner, searching for Viney. If you don't mind, he has taken that on the chest, protected the ball drop beautifully. And I'll say this again, not till I'm blue in the face, because I'll stop before that, but we're 19 minutes in, and for me, Paynham are hungrier for the ball than Prince Alfred. Viney, for his first goal for the club. 30, 20 metres out, 25, he's kicked it. That's a beautiful little start by Paynham. Four goals, too. They wouldn't, in their wildest dreams, have expected this start, and certainly we didn't. And look out, and there's a few blokes, a few tongues rolling already from the Prince Alpha boys as they make their way yeah. to the pine. Well, I, I have a theory. If you want to play the strong favourites, the defending champions, the, the dynasty teams, regardless of the sport, play them early. 
because they're looking long, long term. Yeah. And, yep. Um, had the sh- you know had the celebration, had the shorter preseason, etc., pre-season, etc. Yep. Et I've seen it a few times in other sports, and I'm seeing it in the first twenty minutes here. Um, uh, mind you, there's plenty of time for Prince Albert to get back in this one at the moment. Uh, another clearance. And even the clearance stats, can't wait to see those from Lockie and oh. Dartfish stats at quarter time. Goes to Giles. He had it for a half a second before being tackled. A rushed kick away there, I think, by McNamara. But yep. rushed kick founds the opponent. And I suggest that's probably Lockie. No, it's not Lockie Webb. Uh, maybe Jacob Campbell. Had it eight in it somewhere. Kick down the wing as we identify some new players. That was... Free kick Off again. Hand. To yeah, I thought there was a free kick in there. This will be Wagner, I think. Oh, no, Wagner. Lockie Matthias. Matthias, even. Yep. <sighs> Big lump of a lad, isn't he? Looks he's like huge. almost seven foot. I'm not sure how tall he is. He's gone long when the experience of Will Dow would push Viney under the ball. Actually, I don't think it was Viney. I think it was um, Webb. He pushed under the ball and done it well. He now transfers the play. I need to be quicker with this, Prince Alfred. He, nice kick finds Hugo Kelly. He's got uh, Pat Singleton pushing up at him. Elects to go over him towards Edward Murdoch. He marks it nicely. Has a handball option inside. It ignores that down the line. Does it well. Goes to Mitch Wicks. Haven't seen his brother Tom, whether he's playing. Not today. And, oh, geez, in the end, it was marked by uh, Jordan Neal, but he teased us. Still a fair way out from goal. Trend goes in the goal square if he can get it there. It's set up for him for a hangout. Watch for this, folks. Oh, no, not good enough, but in the end, fumble. Gee, still alive. Paynham just going to take it cleanly here, can they? Oh, how good is Ben Sawford? Yeah. That's beautifully done around the corner. Early nomination recruit of the year yeah. <laughs> after 20 minutes. <laughs> Long game, footy, but gee whiz, he's certainly made an impression. He has indeed. Up. And first impressions count, as we all know. All righty, Paynham have picked it up. They've got the ball. They've got a little bit of time with 21. 21 and a half minutes in the third quarter and they have shut out the defending premiers at this point and they have the footy. Louis Clem, I reckon, out yeah, there Yeah, McKenzie to Clem it McKenzie was. So McKenzie Clem. having some touches as well. So we're seeing a few players playing a fair way up and down the ground. Clem, one of the goal scorers. Dowood, speaking of that, he's following Webb all the way from the forward pocket a couple of minutes ago to the outer wing. It's a throw in. Good, uh, pr- once again, a g- good bit of work by Lockie Webb, though. Protected the dro- ball drop and um, was a bit stiff not to be able to get that in the end as the coach of Prince Alfred makes his way to the bench. Pity he wouldn't be happy with what he's seeing here. And it's a long way back, Phil, from four goals to zero. That's it. And he's getting the first hand view on the field. Uh, Giles got rid of Matthias. That resulted in the free. And I reckon Payne of Norton, you might just be looking at that clock thinking, mm, yeah, we just might keep it off them for a little while here. Jeez, I'm dirty. We haven't got Lambo to get to the huddle today to see Prince Alfred. What goes on at that huddle will be... I'm probably glad the cameraman's not going to have the mic on because it might not be family-friendly <laughs> no. listening. I'm sure he has it in him, Craig Pitt, to go uh, on a rant, but he yeah. certainly wouldn't be happy with what he's seen so far yet to score. Giles uncontested. He tapped it straight down to Sawford. He was such in shock. It's ended up with Jolly. Now, there's, that's the first time I've called Hayden Jolly's name, yep. and that's unusual. So some of the big movers and shakers yet to get into this. We suspect when they do, the game might change, but Viney. I'll tell you what. Viney, Phil. We worried about their forward structure. But it is working a treat. They're kicking to the hot spot, and they're taking it in turns to take the big grabs there. Well, he's much bigger than, as in height, than any other Viney I know. Yeah. <laughs> He'd be a 6'2", 6'3", wouldn't he? Maybe it's the haircut. But he's straight in front, oh. and that has and missed full. everything. Out of bounds on the full. Almost had our first multiple goal scorer of the day. So on the sip and save scoreboard, it is Payne of Northern Union 26, Prince Alfred Donuts. Yep, Mackenzie Sleeve with a good mark there on the centre wing. Been told to go into the corridor. He does that now. He's got plenty of players there. Great kick to Cam Giles. Give it off, Cam. He doesn't. Gee whiz, he had Thomas Sells out open. Would have run into an open goal. Now Sells is a chance. His first game, I think, came into the side late. When they go back and have a look at that, they'll see that that's a missed opportunity there for Cam Giles. Just to farm the yeah. ball out to Tommy Sells. Would have been a real good thing, but... 
doesn't matter really in the end because they have won a free kick for, was it head high field, was it? I'm not sure. I thought the effort from Ben Owen Tomlin might have been holding the ball. Ben Owen Tomlin. I thought that was pretty good because he was outnumbered and he just stopped Princes from getting away into open space. But it sits with uh, Joshua Gurrells. Yep. Um, into the breeze. This will give us an idea of how strong it is. They should get their first score of the day here. He's really kicking from about 45. Nice off the boot, Phil. Has it got the carry? It has. I'd suggest that is his first goal at A-grade footy. Could be wrong. I think he might be a debut game for him today. A nice kick. And I'll tell you, I'll make another statement here. What I've seen from Prince Alfred so far is that they've hung on to the ball a bit too long and haven't linked up with some of the running players. They've just refused to use them. And that was a good example before with uh, the young kid going past Cam Giles. But in the end, nice finish. Puts them on the scoreboard and they'll be very relieved about that as we head. They almost. would be. Um, it's embarrassing when you don't score in a quarter of footy. Yep. Um, and some momentum now their way. Final minutes of this first quarter. Thanks to the Banner Crew, our match day sponsor. And Princes will get the clearance here. Hands off to Searles. Searles the wound burner inside Ooh, 50. Kick. Through the hands of uh, Rob, uh, Robinson, I think. Soccer off the ground by Murdoch. Needs a good wow, bounce. Wee. He got it. Goal was for the first 24 minutes. Two in a minute. And the uh, Redmen are getting back in this contest. I'll tell you what I like there, Phil. All of a sudden, it was like there was a switch and the running of the whole Prince Alfred midfield when that ball went forward. They charged hard, <laughs> charged forward at 100 mile an hour. The young kid, first game, Thomas Searle started it with a daisy cutter off the wing. Um, but have a look at the numbers around yeah. the ball. They, uh, in number 12, uh, uh, McNamara charged straight out of the centre, right into the forward pocket. They looked like they wanted to make it. Make something of this before quarter time and two goals in a minute, as you suggested. We're back into the centre, and again, it's Jolly. This time he hits Mackenzie Slee. We go to centre-half forward. McNamara, I reckon it is. Little fella around the corner. Looking for Riley Robson. Can he hang on to it? He can't. And Edward Murdoch. Also unable to keep the ball in the ground and... Uh, as we approach the 27-minute mark, I think Payne would be glad for the siren to sound any tick yeah. of the clock now. Tell you, we've talked about a nil-all draw. I suggested a nil-all draw. We've had six goals, and it's been highly entertaining. It has been a great game so far. And there's that man again, Sawford, with clearance number 523. He goes to the corridor. Not sure that's the greatest option in the end because Prince Alfred are there in numbers. And though a good contest it ends up with Big Will Doward. Lowers his eyes beautifully. Just doesn't quite hit the kick, but it's good enough. Stays in front of Mitch Larson. He goes around the corner on the left foot. Good defensive effort by Paynham. Beautiful position by Lockie McNamara, but once again, he kicks the ball out the fall. <laughs> so he's perfected that, <laughs> Phil. That was a bit close to my car for comfort. <laughs> I don't know why you would ever park near the well, goal, Well, look, I, I fell for the trick of I, I, I was bringing all the prizes. Oh, uh, the, the, the creative a power and I needed a close car park. <laughs> well, they're under siege, Payne. Can they hang on to a quarter time and uh, maintain yep. their two-goal ascendancy? They have got it in the yeah. back pocket, Ben Vick. Just the 14 points, isn't it, after yep. dominating so much. Kick down this balcony side. Neil from behind. Um, Jordan Neal gets the thump out, another throw, and keeps it on Prince's half of the field. Not overly tall, is he, as a second ruckman, but he competes quite nicely. He's, he's given Hill. away head-to-head, -head, but he positions himself well. The ruck tap needs a bit of work, though, because it went straight to Owen Thomas. Still a hot footy to be had. Thankfully, it's a coolish day. And, yeah, that quarter time siren surely can't be too far. Oh, we just danced it because it's our first game and <laughs> we're not used to it. I've uh, been calling some women's footy and there's like 70 minute flat quarters. I feel like I'm doing overtime. Kick away. That was Sawford again, by the way. Yeah. Oh, oh my, my lordy, lordy, yeah. lordy. I think we're going to maybe just have a tribunal hearing. Might want to make their booking. Because that was crude and unnecessary by Mitch Larson. Mm, I don't often see that anymore. That was sort of commonplace in the uh, 80s. And right on cue is our quarter time. We're going to have a quarter time melee. Uh, <laughs> that's that vibe of it. Players are separating. 
Fired up the Paynham crowd on the balcony here. Who was it that got collected? Uh, it was Ben Vidic that got hit. Uh, thankfully he's up. And of course they're going through each other's huddles. Alrighty. Skipper's in there. John Giannini pushing his weight around, letting them know that's not acceptable behaviour. Now in comes the Prince Alfred boys. They said, well, we're not standing that from, from you either, do you? So we'll you just better get yourself hold out. Hold off for a second until they've cleared here. <laughs> and Gia's gone through and uh, verbal, verbaled and hit every single Prince Alfred player. But the man who hit the bump was, of course, Mitch Larson. And All right. we'll see if we can get a replay of that, Phil. So uh, let's go to our quarter time break. Uh, we just thought we'd stick around. It is quarter time here. Panham Norwood Union 4-2-26. Uh, the visitors, Prince Alfred, 2 straight 12. The goal scorers are Louis Clem, Jacob Campbell, Lachlan Matthias and Harrison Viney. We'll take our quarter time break. We'll bring up that replay to come back to Jacko. Um, oh, I look forward to you're that. watching the Adelaide Footy League. Thanks to Filming Footy. Simon Black Academy is a three-pillared program that combines both education and Australian rules football. Available in four states throughout Australia, the program covers three key areas. The first is an education component through the Torrens University. The second is the development of the participants' AFL skills, helping the player to become the best player they can possibly be. And the third is a leadership and growth program. The Academy is a perfect opportunity for participants who like football, they get exposed to AFL coaches and mentoring opportunities as they do their university degree. Based down at Norwood Oval and the Ark at Campbelltown, it is a fantastic program for anyone interested in sports management who loves football and wants to extend their education with a Torrens University degree. Feel free to check out the website simonblack.com.au. first quarter and that was kind of crude for mine Jacko. Yeah the ball was there Phil if we if we I don't know whether we have the technology to do a slow motion um, I think he probably could have pulled out of the contest to be honest with you Phil mm. I, I will agree with you there um, I guess that's the sort of thing <laughs> that you know we used to see time and time again and he he certainly could have avoided the contest we'll see if we can get it one more time um, and have another look at it I'm not sure whether we can do a slow-mo on it but See the ball there. Yeah. Okay. yeah. He, he probably could have avoided it, but the ball was there. Ne feel like. Never looks great when you jump into it and you yeah. leave your feet. Yeah, but yeah, that, that's the problem there. Probably but said the, enough on the matter. <laughs> but the ball was high, so yeah. we'll move on. Uh, and Prince Alfred fought back gamely in the, the second half. Well, not second half, the last five minutes of the quarter. Showed enough, and now they've got the breeze at their back, Phil. You wonder whether have Paynham fired their best shot. Mm. Um in all areas of the ground, I thought they were competitive. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, if you're the underdog, you probably have to fire the first shot, which is what the Falcons did. Princes have shown they're now awake. They're back in the game. Um, and the Princes will get what there is of the breeze, not that it's that consequential in, in the second quarter. I'm not sure if I mentioned the goal scorers. It was Murdoch and Garrells were the two goal scorers for the Redmen. Yep. 
And the four players we're tracking today from Prince Alfred, the two are Trengove, who had six touches that quarter. Jolly a bit quiet compared to what we're normally used to. We quite often say when we're co calling him that why doesn't someone tag him? Yeah. We'll have to keep our eye on it, see whether he is. Got someone running with him. They only had the three. And for, um, for Payne of Norwood Union, well, Ben Sawford's the best player on the ground for mine. His clearance work's been second and none. He's had eight touches and Brad McKenzie five. So good start by those boys in their first game in the black and white. A couple of cheerios to Lambo, who's no doubt watching somewhere on assignment at the moment. Lambo, look forward to you joining us as the season progresses. And a special cheerio to Peter Walsh, who's been in hospital recently um, and uh, is now out of hospital and much better, which is uh, which is great for us all to hear, Peter. And, uh, and, and best wishes from us all at the Adelaide Footy League and Adelaide Footy TV. I just see Jay Viney, which is obviously Harrison's dad, just making his way off the ground. <laughs> the old Viney boys, they all look alike, don't they? They're dead ringers. Uh, and certainly had wonderful careers. Todd Viney in particular at the Melbourne Football Club. Mm. He'd be pumped with the way they're going. And his son, vice-captain out there. It's good uh, to see. Good hey, recruit. Oh, it's been a bit of it. He went to the coin toss without a coin. And they almost went to the centre bounce without a footy. <laughs> <So> <laughs> yeah, no, it's hard to play without a footy, I'll grant you that. A couple of key ingredients there in the context of a football game. All righty, second quarter set to rock and roll. Can Princes do something with the breeze? They trail by 14 points. You're with it, Sean Jackson. I think it's Lockie Matthias gone back to start in the ruck against Cam Giles. Obviously, no one decisive hand on that. Goes the direction of McKenzie, feeds out a handball. Still ball spills the ground. Now Webb's there. And it is, in fact, McKenzie who gets the ball out of the centre on the left foot. And Harrison Viney, got good initial speed for a big fella. It's just causing Hugo Kelly a little bit of problem with that first couple of metres in the best position there. That's three good clunks inside forward 50. Yeah, presenting well. He won a better result than his last kick, which went out on the fall, if my memory serves me correctly. He's straight in front, 45 from goal. This one goes straight through the middle, and it's clear the goal's by 10 metres, so the wind, not a massive factor, folks. It is where we're, where we're sitting it in is. the grandstand, like a little wind tunnel. But out on the ground, it's certainly not affecting the length of the kick, if that is to be any indication from Harrison Viney. Kicks his second, and a great debut. Just checking, you cleared all the dart fish stats that we had, Jacko, that we needed to do, yep. Yeah, we Heard didn't do it. the team stats, so we'll, we'll, we'll have a look at that at, uh, at half-time. Half Not a problem, just that's a good. Place. Um, yeah, so Payne of Norwood Union respond. Get it back out the 20 points, the ball up in the middle. Great tap. <laughs> and pass across the back of his head by McNamara. Leads to another Falcons clearance. Redman will get the rebound. Kicks long into open space. This guy's got a paddock if he can keep his feet. This is Cam Giles. Had the poise to get back up. Fine, Trengo. That's always a good option. Now sights up Sam Buckham, the recruit from the Red Legs in the Blue Boots. Moves well, Giles, for a big fella, doesn't he? he? Does. He's got really good um, agility. Usually a ruckman at low level is problematic, but he did that element pretty well. Hand pass to Trango. His bouncing, bouncing kick towards the goal square. Picked up by the boundary. Uh, that kick was under pressure being swirled around. Falcons with some numbers and some poise. Kicking to a two-on-one contest here right down the throat of, Buck um, of uh, Buckham who's just outside 50. He kicks for the high spot. Plenty there on this occasion. Good mark. And that's a good grab to uh, Max Maxie Wagner. Wagner, he'll clear from defence. Yeah, and a great mark, and he switches the play now. Out in the direction of Cooper Young, and he marks it just inside the boundary line with a bit of tension from Will Charlton. Goes on the left foot. Down the line, it's a bit of a wobbler. Not sure anyone's going to be able to mark that, and they can't. And the boundary on pile this side comes into play again, and he has certainly had his work cut out. This side boundary, I nearly cleaned up our cameraman. There's James, you can see on screen now, our intrepid <laughs> cameraman getting... Any closer to the footy, he'd need some player insurance. <laughs> so Cam Giles gets front position nicely. Lays it off to Sam Buckham. Now in the middle with Trengove. Nice kick towards Jolly. Jumps, can't take it, but the umpire's given him a free kick for two. Oh, plays on quickly. Look at this kick. That's what he's known for. Oh, you don't get him any better than that, Riley Robinson. You've got to hang on to them, son. That was an absolute beauty. 
Just noticing Jack Trangove. I, I'm just not 100% sure he's got an opponent at the moment. Every time I've looked at him through the course of the game, there's no one right on his hammer and tack. And, gee, the, he'd love that after the professional AFL days of, you know, that accountability. Well, Jolly's gone to half forward, so I wonder if that's a positional move at quarter time yeah. or just a rotation. Um, had a hand in that last play, obviously. Soccer off the ground here by Brad McKenzie towards the 50-metre arc in that scoreboard pocket. Uh, John Street, I think that is, at that end of the ground. Of course, it's interesting alignment of the over. We've got north, south, east and west streets and the ground runs northeast to southwest. So we're pretty much at the southern end of the ground at the moment. Giles with the tap. Quick um, tackle. Good a smother. The two sevens, I reckon, were going at it. That was Buckham's kick, uh, spoiled by Nye. Falcons inside forward 50. Uh, I'm not sure if you're ever going to get... I, I thought I saw a Prince Alfred player appealing for deliberate out-of-bounds on an inside 50 kick. Yeah, you're not going to get anywhere <laughs> on the ground in that late footy league game. And never you know, anywhere. Waste, don't waste your breath, son. And you'd never get it in any league anywhere no. <laughs> kicking inside 50. Maybe the AFL last night. Oh, in, inside 50? Yeah. Kicking inside? Anyway, made my point. Yeah, no, I think we've got you, you've got it. You've laboured it. You've moved on, Phil. <laughs> and we are inside the 50 for Paynham. Will Dower takes it out of the ruck. That could be holding the ball. The umpires let it go. Plenty of numbers around this contest. Players willingly throwing themselves in. There's some heat. I understand the next goal is pretty important. They've opened up a three-goal gap again. Paynham. Can they sustain it? Ball's in the air. Giles hits on the back play. Once again, no one able to take it, but the umpire has pulled out a free kick against Cooper Young, and that is um, Will per Adam Perriman. He gets it, lays it off to Sam Buckham around the corner, hugs the boundary line. Much better effort by Riley Robinson. No, sorry, it's Will Doward. He brings it in board. He does that well. Hits up Lockie McNamara. He now unloads it to Sam Buckham with good pressure. Double tack, double teamed by uh, both the new boys. I can see McKenzie that's ended up with a free kick. Comes in board. Hits up Max Wagner. Now, now it's uh, Tommy Altamori. As we go through the middle of the ground, he's by himself there. The Payne of Norwood Union player. I'm not sure if that is Cooper Young there trying to be defended by Will Dowell. Is it Cooper Young? See how good I am? Oh, you're a sensational, Jacko. He's moving around and trying to try and open up the angle. He's just, don't kick it around the body with that kind of angle that far out. No. Oh, you're kidding me. Is he going to kick it on the left foot? He is. You're and kidding. No, has no problem with it. I'll tell you what, they've opened up the same <laughs> advantage yeah. they had, which is a four-goal gap. They're out to six goals, too. And Prince Alfred, they are struggling to have any real... I mean, what we saw was their ability to score quickly yep. in the last five minutes. But they've started this quarter much like they started the first quarter, and that is behind their opposition. Their kicking inside 50, Payne Nord Union, is absolutely elite. Teams can frustrate the heck of it. They get plenty of the ball, and their kick inside 50 is woeful. Yeah. Payne has, has hit a target more times than not. It's, um, it's been a, a treat to watch so far. So the underdogs are up by a reasonable margin at the moment. Giles do, having to do his own ruck work at the moment. Ooh, Sumner is ooh. met and tackled. Too high, or should have been, Umpire I would have thought. says, I maybe missed that one. I'll come in and ball it up. Yeah, I don't think he was in a great position to see. It was the poor lad who got collected on that. Brett Ansel it was for Paynham. Yeah. All right. Now we've got to get the, the ball back. Taking edge, centre square for the Falcons. Sip and save scoreboard, 6-2-38. Luckily for Prince Alfred, they've been accurate. Two straight, 12. Oh, beautifully Great intercepted by, met by Ben Owen Thomas. He's done a couple of clever things today. Found a player in space on the outer wing. He goes with the worm-burning kick. Dowd gets in front position of Webb. Webb recovers the football. Got the hand pass by the boundary line. They're keeping it alive here. But one pass too many. Although... <laughs> In the end. Sam Buckham, he looks like a beauty, Buckham's doesn't he? Buckham's been busy. He escaped well, and now they clear it out of defence. Yeah, good composure, Sam Buckham. I like him. He's got quick feet. It's a kid that's come out of the SNFL from Norwood, was it, Phil? Yep. 
Okay, it's now with Will Charlton. He switches the play to this side of the ground, which is good for us who have got poor eyesight. Ends up with Tommy Searles. He goes back into the corridor now. And they play on quickly. Will Charlton lowers the eyes, trying to hit up Riley Robinson. Look at the look at the defense. Two on one. We've seen that a few times, haven't we? From Paynham. Their defensive action's been very strong to this stage. The umpire balls it up. Prince Alfred hit it on the back play. I think that's Jordan Neal. Follows his work up nicely. It's the kid again. Tommy Searles. I'm liking the way he's working his way into the game. A nice bit of speed off the half back line from Paynham. But Prince Alfred of all the answers and Hugo Kelly into the corridor. He goes in board, spots up Giles. Giles got a lot of options in board, decides to go with the deepest of those. Good, good skills for a big fella. He looks very yeah, balanced, Cam got Giles. A 36, so I might have to check on that because I don't have a 36 in my uh, Pat Singleton oh, is. Pat Singleton, he was the new kid. That's yep. right. Thank you, Jacko. Um, Oscar Clark, a late, a late inclusion. Beautiful kick. Nice kick. That's probably one of the better inside 50s. Riley Robinson, who's just outside it. Even with the breeze, decides not to have the shot. He puts it up, top of the goal square. Neil is lurking. Oh. Jolly at the back. That's always dangerous. He comes in to lay the tackle on um, Altamore, but in the end, it will be a stoppage. Ball up, 16 metres out from the Prince's goal. They trail by 26 points. No one does the ruck tap. Quick kick out of defence. Paynham releases the pressure, albeit momentarily. Yeah, they hook it back into the centre corridor. They've got all the answers. Cam Giles has got it. Nice kick around the corner for a big fella once again. Looks good with the footy. But unable to take the mark on the last line was Jordan Neal. And he'll contest, I would imagine, this next boundary throw in. He does plenty of numbers around the ball, Phil. We probably can't see the true picture here, but all players within a 50 metre radar, radius, radius of the ball, which is a common way the game is played now. Umpire throws it in. Does it well, Neil. Puts it on the check. Once again, Paynham have got all the answers at the stoppage, though. Out they come. Well smothered by Trengove. Red boots from Paynham follows his work up. Not able to take it. And some good pressure. Game one is what you would expect. All players have been waiting a long time to play in this game, other than those that have ventured up to Northern Territory, that is. Well, cool day for those who've spent our summer there nice. probably warmer in McKenzie. Darwin than it was down here come to think of it this summer Brad McKenzie Good with mark. a kick down the wing, that's a nice grab that's Viney um, who's been really, really good, I mean the recruits so far you'd have to give the, you know, Sawford and Viney in particular have been prominent I'd be interested to see what school Viney went to I think all the Vineys went to Prince Alfred so Oh, That'll oh. be interesting to see if that's the correct. <laughs> Possibly. This is Ansel. In front of the scoreboard. High kick. Bit wide for mine. Will Darwood has those for breakfast, lunch and afternoon tea. He'll clear again for the Redmen. Not his greatest kick, but they get away with it, Prince Alfred. Although though, the umpire has, given, uh, has called a free kick. And I reckon it's Viney that's going to get it and shoot for his third for the day. I'd like to see if we can get a replay of that free kick. Just, if nothing else, to keep our producer on the toes and, and awake. <laughs> the Italian stallion, Aleandro, there's none better in the game. Of course there. <laughs> so, so Harrison Viney it is. Pretty similar position to his last goal. Coming in for goal number three and goal number seven for Paynham. Nice balance, like his action. Pulled that one, though, a little bit to the left. That's two that he's missed, so I think puts him on 2-2. Two, two. He really could have almost put the sword. Out they come. Out they come. Paynham, Tommy, uh, Prince Alfred, Tom Sumner in the back pocket. Looks, he's going to have to go long down the line. No, a real tall target there anywhere. Trengove is in the best position. And in the end, he cops one <laughs> courtesy of young Cooper Young. Nine on nine. And just make him work a little bit harder for it. like to see that from a kid. All right, boundary throw in. Yeah, jump has come in a fair bit on this occasion. It is falling a little bit short of the Ruckman on this side. Mm. But I've noticed Young eventually goes down. Did cop one high, not seen. But it's still going to be a clearance to the Falcons, I think. Uh, 
holding on advantage paid Altamore from the attacking edge of the centre square again the long direct kick inside forward 50 has been a treat to see on this occasion a one on one contest Viney doesn't win give the points on that occasion to Hugo Kelly of Prince Alfred a throw in front of one of the light towers here with the appropriate padding which I assume is something that some poor guy or gal has to do every match day morning drag those out of the change rooms and wrap up the light towers so nobody runs into them. We have a long list of volunteer roles that need to be done to make your match days happen. Giannini. By the boundary. He did that very well. And eventually he did take it out of bounds in the process. Okie dokie. A little bit of context, Phil. We are 14 minutes into the second quarter. And um, oh, we'll, have, we'll have a look at that last free kick here. You'll see the transfer of play from Will Doward. Heads out. It goes... Off for the inside of his boot a little bit. Trengove it was. That, no, no, was it Trengove? I think it might yes, have been Trengove. Yeah, was. they gave the free kick away to Viney. So that was the, what the free Trengo, kick was for. Trengove, Viney, there's a pretty big Melbourne connection in there somewhere. Yeah, let's have a look at the context. The scoreboard, Prince Alfred have scored two goals. They came within one minute of each other. Yes. So for for the 14 minutes of this quarter and 28 for the first quarter, 42 minutes, they've scored in two minutes of that 42. And haven't really looked like it this quarter, I've got to say. No. Perryman, what will he do? I'm not going to disagree with you, Jacko. Good. He goes short. Normally a good kick of the footy. That's no exception. I like Sam Buckham's game. For the young kids out there, wear blue boots. You always stand out for the commentators. That's it. Or have a crazy hairstyle or long sleeves. Mm. Something. Mm. <laughs> Prince is down the outer side. Oh, a soccer off the ground. Uh, ends up with Prince Alfred Murray. They're run, trying to run in waves, but stopping that was Altamore. We lay the Altamore. We're going to call them. We're not going to call them Altamore. It's Altamore. <laughs> We're going to bring out our inner Italian that we know looks within us somewhere. And that's a nice mark. Even better grab to the coach. Pitt. Yep. So Pitt, too far out to score. There's his worm burning kick, and that's that's how it's done. Mm. Gee, if you're taking that. One in the first five minutes of the quarter. Yep. Riley Robinson when he was in a really good position, but that was a nice pair of hands, wasn't it? Yeah, that was right out there. I mean, still a tough ma ask to mark because there was a player right there to spoil, but Robinson was able to get the arms out and make it stick. For the first score to Prince Alfred this quarter, they've only had two scores for the game. He's straight in front. Unloads a huge kick. And now they have their first behind of the season. 2 1 13. Prince uh, Payne of Norwood Union 6 4 40. That's a 27 point margin on the sip and save scoreboard. Oh, I love it, Phil. The professionalism sip and save. Might have a couple tonight, too. Saturday night. Why wouldn't you? Payne long out of the back pocket. Oh. They take the crumb, too, nicely. P Prince Alfred were all at it in the contest in the air, but no one on the ground. And hunting for the ball now is Louis Clem. Not able to take it cleanly. We'll have a ball up. Doesn't, I have noticed uh, Jolly went to half forward. Now he is around the ball now for for um, Payne, uh, for Prince Alfred and ends up with a footy. Seen that a few times. Heads towards the half forward flank. Edward Murdoch can't take it. Good defence again from Payne, although that has been called holding the ball. And it's for the man who dished out the big bump at the end of the first quarter, Mitch Larson. Goes inboard to Harrison Jolly. Watch this kick, folks. This is how you kick a footy. Doesn't miss. Oh, oh did put uh, did put um, McNamara under a fair bit of pressure. They're mucking around with it a little bit. Can they? Well, that's almost holding the ball. In fact, they're about almost. That is holding the ball. And Brett Ansell will relieve the pressure that they were under then. So far, the Falcons have um, withstood. The forward four rows of Prince is having allowed a, another goal. Good grab in there. They're winning a lot of these one-on-one -on -one battles. That one to Matthias. Yeah, they've come on the two, two tools from Paynham, haven't they, from last yeah. year. And that's, I mean, how many marks have they taken inside 50 in this game? Mm. This is um, Jacob Campbell who has a goal. This is going to be a tough one because the breeze is all wrong for him. He's going to give it a crack, though. Yeah, I reckon just sit it up on the left post, Phil. And let it come. Will, yep. it, will it come back with the breeze blowing straight through, though, you reckon? Yeah, yeah I think it will. I think okay. he just needs to sit it in the air. So he wants to elevate the ball a little bit, so not a flat kick. 
It's like a nine iron in golf here. All Not right. bad. Off the boot. Not bad. Off the boot. That is a glorious kick. The kicking skills of Panem Norwood Uni inside 50 and then their conversion today has been elite. What you're seeing now, Phil, is you're now seeing a transition from coming into the game unsure of where they sit in the, in the market mm. to now, 20 minutes gone in the second quarter, starting to go, geez, we can win this game. We're five goals up against the Premiers. We're what? 19 minutes gone, five, nearly five up at half. Can it's, they hang on? It's five and a half. It's 33. Now, it's not match winning yet. Yep. And we've seen that Princes can score a lot in a short period of time. But, gee, this, this is could get out of hand very quickly at this rate. They've oh, got their A-grade midfield in there. McNamara, the Jolly, the Trengove, the Jolly, out. Good footy. <laughs> Brain have never touched the ball. Uh, Murdoch on the left hand. Really poor choice there. And Payne are able to defend. Follows his work, work up quite nicely. Mitch Larson with a strong tackle. But it's a couple of unknowns for mine. Owen Thomas, Altamore. Yeah, so Ben Owen, Owen Thomas has been around for a while, had a, um, a bad year last year with injury, might not have played at all, but certainly a very capable player, and we're seeing that today, aren't we? We are. Princes have some numbers if they can work it through, which they do. Will Charlton kicks it to 55. Oh, again, oh, the it's fly. a falcon. It's hit him in the head. It's, it's, Oh, there's so many lines there, I don't even know where to start. We need a replay of that one for half time to see whether he did get Falcon, the coach, because the, that, uh, he's the come Falcon, off the ground. The Falcon at the Falcons. Okay. <laughs> um, but not by a Falcon. So is it's by that boundary line? <laughs> come off with concussion, pity. <laughs> well, tell me that for here we go. Let's have a look. Alejandro's see getting into the game now. Could be a bad call, but I did say it hit him in the face. Oh, he stopped it too early. <laughs> Back to the live action. The Italian stallion. Uh, might be one for between the posts, maybe, Jacko. You doing any funny videos between the posts this year? You're gonna uh, probably, yeah. You probably. and Tony Neal let loose without control this year? <laughs> yeah. Of course, you can watch yeah. that on a, on a Wednesday night. Once uh, You did a brilliant job solo hosting. Tony in COVID isolation? Yeah, I quite enjoyed it by myself, I've got to say. Would I like it with you, but Tony drives me crazy, as you know. <laughs> That's why I want to sit back and watch the dynamics. <laughs> I know he's not watching this game, so... Okay, hang on, here we go, here we go. <laughs> Alejandro's corrected himself here. Does gotta... it hit him in the face, folks? Oh, I reckon it hit him on the top of the head. I reckon it sconed him, yeah. <laughs> Well, the fact that he came straight off after yeah. is a pretty good sign. All right, let's get back to this game. We'll talk about Tony Neal behind his back uh, later on as uh, he's done and almost takes out the camera. Tony is, uh, if you're anywhere Tony Neal is today, he's up in the hills helping Pistols in the Hills Footy League. That's Blackwood enough, that's enough about Tony. McKenzie yeah, it, comes off for a good <laughs> earned spell. Gene Innie back on. I was going to say, it's all part of filming footy and the wonderful work they do with local footy around the country. Jacko. Right, okay. So, Pano, it is that hit it forward. Jolly's there for Prince Alfred, as is um, Oscar oh. Clark. But once again, Pano do it well. It's, it's in uh, Louis Clem's hands. Not able to take it clean. Gets it on the second. Back to Giannini. Well smothered by Oscar Clark. Lowers the eyes. Hits up Larson. Play on, son. Play on. He doesn't. He's, they've been a bit reactive at times. Nice kick, though, in the direction of Robinson. Beautiful kick. Presents well, Riley Robinson, I've got to say. He's given a... Giving him a free kick, has he? Yeah. Is it out? What was it oh, for? It might have been pushing the back. Push? I don't think I can think. I wasn't out on the full, I don't think. Holds the ball um, a bit different. Riley yeah. Robinson looks like he holds the top of the ball, but it's ended up nicely with Murdoch. Oh, what a beautiful centering kick to Mackenzie Slee. <laughs> and I tell you what, Riley Robinson, we didn't see. I mean, we saw a lot of him last year, but he was in a forward line where he was probably the fourth well, or fifth. Brazzle Dazzle and Bartlett. Correct. <laughs> There's not a lot of space left after that. Yeah, well, this year he looks like he's the man, doesn't he, on the forward mm -hmm. line? And McKenzie Sleet, I'm pretty sure when I called McKenzie playing for North Adelaide, he was a defender who didn't score any goals at all. So we'll see what happens here. Well, he's a chance to prove you wrong, Phil. Can he kick goals? Mm, he can, the defender. And that is a very, very important goal. And that takes the Prince Alfred boys out to three goals. One, their first goal of the quarter and we are at the 20 
23 minute mark. 23 minute mark. <laughs> so they're goalless in normal time and three goals in time on. Mm. Wow. Okay. 7 4 to 3 1. Got their best midfield in again, too. Yeah. So we'll, I'd expect them to win this clearance. So let's have a look. So if we'd been a bit quieter this quarter, Phil. Yeah. In there with Giannini and also. Um, well, he's up. He's with Trengo, which is a, a major matchup. Goes straight to them. Sofa got a touch. Trengo tackled well. him, but he managed to get it forward somehow. And that's just pain and we're doing at the moment. It's inside their forward 50 with not a possession to count. Now there's sort of a half kick from Campbell and a courageous effort by Giles. Probably even more courageous effort by the pain and by Nye to go against the flight. Giles will get the free kick. All right, 24 minutes gone. Yeah, it was good, Matty and I. Really good footy, son. And Giles is happy to take his time. There's some easy kicks to the left or right. He goes right down the middle. Inside 50, an uncontested mark to Robinson. With the breeze, I reckon it'd be half a chance if he went back and lined up the shot. Instead, he rushed it, kicked it to a two-on-one contest to the opposition. Oscar Clark's got a lot of black and white around him. Goes out wide, back to Robinson, 55 out. Now he's too far out to score. Where's he going to place this? He goes long too deep, I reckon. They're going to prove me wrong in a sec because umpire's found a free, free kick. Going to go the way Paynham, of Paynham Norwood Union. Yep. Relieve a little bit of pressure that Princes are trying to get a run on later stages of the second quarter. Yeah, it looks a bit raw, Riley Robinson. There's a good coaching challenge there for pity, I reckon. Something going to try and it's hard to change the bloke's kicking action when he's played for a while. But he, the hands on the ball, are, uh, for me, what looks like it's bringing him undone a little bit. I tell you what, though, I love his energy. He's got plenty of bounce. He looks like he's athletic. And there's something there that you can definitely work with. And if you don't get any of those other boys back in the forward line, now they go back again into the forward line, and that is a terrific mark. I'm going to say Edward Murdoch, but not confidently. No, it might be smaller player. I'm going to go Wicks now without seeing the number. That might be you are right, Wicks. Wicks, Mitch, variety. And no longer do I call and rave on about the Mitch and Tom wine. <laughs> what? Because I've never Lost got course. one bottle Lost of that. Lost course, mate. Yep, I'll move on from that. From that, we all have things we need to move on. <laughs> from, don't we? <laughs> I need a new wine sponsor. Cab cabinets dry. Mitch Wicks, 40 35 perhaps out from goal. They need this. This is similar tail to the first quarter. If they can get two within a short period of time, it keeps them within range. Very, very important kick. Mitch Wicks makes Lovely. no mistake, and that puts them out to 4 1. Now, trail again by three and a half goals. And they refuse to go away or lie down, don't they? They do. It's coming in, in batches for the Red Men and just gives them that little bit of momentum to take into half time. That, hey, we're still in touch. Yep. Uh, last time we were here, Jacko, you were on assignment somewhere, Tony, you know, I caught it. And Prince Alfred up by five goals going to the final quarter. It was the Falcons who stormed home. Game one last year, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, uh, Chris, that was a. Midway through, Christian Rook and Anthony Wilson, a kick around the body in the final minute, uh, got the Falcons home to absolute bedlam here on the balcony, which is again, well... Patronised. Uh, that's the word, thank you, sir. <laughs> no, Matty Nye putting his head to the bottom of that pack as well, Phil. He's got a... He's, he's as hard as a cat's and, head, isn't he? And you don't get that called a lot. It's, no. it's not something that stands out for commentators, but we recognise it when we can. Sawford, I reckon that is, around the corner. Long, deep into the forward line. I need to Dowd, take he does cleanly, but no, nothing there. But they did hold up that last momentum. And uh, I tell you, the people in the back are, are screaming to Patrick Sands, I have a shot, he son. Is, he's going to. The umpire wants the ball he back. He's going to. Why not, son? Yeah, he's got to have a go. Yeah, it's gone the barrel. He's got good connection. But good connection doesn't get the job done. Needed a bit more distance. Half-time scores, Paynham, Norwood, Union, the Falcons, seven goals, four, would you believe, against the reigning premiers, Prince Alfred, Old Collisions, the Red Men, four goals, one, Phil. In that quarter, Paynham, Norwood, Union kick three goals, two, the Red Men, two goals, one. We're going to take a break, uh, get some dartfish stats, give you some analysis, come back with the second half. Here with Phil Hurd and Sean Jackson. This is, you're watching the Adelaide Footy League, thanks to Filming Footy.
The Simon Black Academy is a three-pillared program that combines both education and Australian rules football. Available in four states throughout Australia, the program covers three key areas. The first is an education component through the Torrens University. The second is the development of the participants' AFL skills, helping the player to become the best player they can possibly be. And the third is a leadership and growth program. The Academy is a perfect opportunity for participants who like football. They get exposed to AFL coaches and mentoring opportunities as they do their university degree. Based down at Norwood Oval and the Ark at Campbelltown, it is a fantastic program for anyone interested in sports management who loves football and wants to extend their education with a Torrens University degree. Feel free to check out the website simonblack.com.au Well, as, you, as you know folks, normally I get a chance to bounce some ideas off my co-host in Tony Neal and like most people in Adelaide, he's down with COVID at the moment so I stand here alone being put under the spotlight, being asked to select who I think will finish in the grand final in Division 1 and who will finish at the other end and find themselves back in Division 2. Let me tell you, I'll put it straight on the, bat, on the mat, I've got no idea at this stage. There's a big influx to all clubs in Division 1 this year. But I'm going to go through a couple. So we'll talk about round one. It's going to be an absolute ripping game. First up, Paynham versus Prince Alfred. I think they played in round one last year and Paynham got there in the end. And um, Well, Paynham have lost a lot of players. There's no question about that. Um, new coach may take them a while. I think PAC will get, up, get the money that week. Um, but I see Paynham perhaps missing out on the five this year. I think Prince Alfred will be there in the grand final. Can they go back to back? History tells you they can't. There's a lot of work to be done. I think Goodwood Saints are looking good for me. Haven't seen them play, by the way, so this is really pie in the sky stuff. But hey, I've got to hang my hat on something, so I'm going to go Goodwood Saints to play PAC in the grand final. Other games, we've got Brighton are playing Goodwood Saints. I think that'll give us a good indication as early as round one how Brighton are going. There's been not much noise out of there. I think they've kept their list pretty much together. I know uh, Will Rivers has retired which is obviously a massive hole, but um, I think that'll give us an indication as to where they are going to finish. I've got them just out of the five, Brighton. I've got them in sixth position, and as I mentioned, Goodwood Saints to finish top. In third position, I think St. Peter's. They have recruited well, been pretty good nick last year. Haven't seen a lot of losses from there. They are playing Ross Trevor round one. Worried about I'm not worried about Ross Trevor, to be honest with you, but I'm hearing from a lot of people that they've lost a few players. So I've got them slipping out of the five probably for the first time for a while, um, I think. And uh, I think they'll be towards the bottom of the table. I think the new teams coming in that will make uh, into the five this year will be Port Districts. So round one, they play against Glenunga. And I think Glenunga, to be honest with you, are going to be up against it first year in Division 1. When you come from Division 2 into Division 1, you want to make sure you retain as many of your players as you can and add to it. Well, for poor old Glenunga, that's not been the case. They've lost five or six really experienced players. Yes, they've brought a couple in, but I think playing stocks-wise, unless they get some real development out of their juniors, they might find themselves off the pace and back in Division 2. So the other side, I think, that will uh, have a bit of a resurgence is Teacher Gully. New coach Alex McKay, it'll be his first time coaching, but he's certainly well respected and well loved out at Perderinga. So I've got them sneaking into the five. So this is how it looks from my end, folks. Bear in mind, I am flying real blind here. Normally I'd be letting Tony do the work and I'd be slamming him for his selections, but I'm running with this. Goodwood Saints and PAC to play in the grand final, one and two. St. Peter's three, Port Districts four. Tea Tree Gully 5, Brighton 6, Paynham 7, Old Iggy's 8, 
Ross Trevor 9 and Glenunga 10. Now if I get any of them right, it'll be a miracle. Stay tuned, we'll know more in two weeks time. Predictions. How are you feeling about it halfway through the round one? Well, I'm feeling good because no one's won or lost at this stage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but after watching today's first half, um, look, Payne have surprised me. So we Prince thanks, Alfred have surprised me. Yes, thanks to Lockie, we have some dart fish stats for you to digest here, Jacko. Yeah, and that, this may tell a tale. I um, just had James, De- uh, James Parkinson, Jimmy Parkinson, come and ask me from Prince Alfred what I thought about the first half. And for me... And I think you agree, Phil. It looked like um, Prince Alfred was second of the ball on too many occasions. Payne and boys looked hungrier. So I think if uh, Prince Alfred can turn that hunger around in the second half, they'll win. I think the talent is still better in their camp than it is in the black and white camp. Yeah. Um, so let's see if the stats reveal any of that. Inside 50 is pretty similar, really. So that suggests to you that Payne and defence has been very good. Intercept marks... Even, 7-6, to six. marks inside 50. I think you commented it a few yeah. times about Payne's ability to mark the ball. Riley Robinson on the conversely has is, is been a one-man band in the front half for Prince Alfred, so they perhaps need to find another target up there to help him out a little I, bit in the I air. I was just thinking as well that Prince Payne will kick seven goals. I reckon they've all come from set shots. Right, OK. I can't remember a running no, goal. No, that's a good point. Yeah, no, you good point. They're free kicks, nothing in it really. Thirteen to ten, turnovers once again similar. Centre clearance is five all. I thought that might have been a bit heavier in favour of Paynham, but uh, certainly we, we, we called when we called the the centre clearances with the A grade midfield of Prince Alfred in there together. Jolly McNamara, Trengove, and the captain and ruckman Cam Giles is pretty pretty impressive. Clearances in total twenty four to twenty one. Um, Tackles, 29. Now, that's probably mm. what we're seeing here, 29 to 16. So that's a good indication, I think, of what, what I was talking about before. It's not quite double, but it's not far off. Yep. So the, the defensive pressure has been excellent, and I don't think um, Prince Alfred's has been quite at the level. Hit-outs in favour of Prince Alfred. You'd expect that with Cam Giles and yeah. um, Cam Milne being unavailable today. But I thought the, the, Prince, uh, the Payne and boys are competitive. And marks, I think, were in favour of Prince Alfred. So the hitouts were about 60-40, Prince, in were, terms yeah. of per- percentage. Yep. But Payne and win the clearances. Yep. So that's a kudos to the, their midfield in those contests. Yeah, absolutely. And the inside 50s being equal, but it's those marks and the conversion that's really been... If you look at, oh, yeah, in a 7 4 4 one, um, they've been really good at capitalising. Because, what do we have, 23 inside 50s, Payne and you're 11-4. That's about 50% getting an inside 50, getting a scoring shot, yeah, which, and is, which is pretty good. We are getting four midfielders uh, statted today, so two from each side. So for, uh, And this gives you a, a bit of a reflection on what we just spoke about, the clearances being pretty even. Trengove has had 11 for the half, and Jolly has had um, seven for the half, so 18, and 19 combined for Payne and Boys. Sulfur just dropped off a little bit that quarter, only the one touch, but nine for the half. And Mackenzie rounded out another five, so he's on ten for the half. So not sure either side has got any real dominance in the midfield at this stage. And quite often you'll hear people say the games are won and lost in the midfield. I don't think that's the case at this stage. The game has been won by a side that is a bit more defensively aggressive and a bit more aggressive at the footy. That's the way it looks to me. Um, You may disagree or agree at home, I'm not sure. But at half-time, Payne and Norwood Union lead by three goals and all of Prince Alfred's goal scoring has occurred in a two-minute patch in the first quarter and a five-minute patch <laughs> in the second, second quarter. All in time on as well, which yep. I'm wondering, you know, you, and we're going to jump at things early at this stage of the season, but um, OK, is that a, a, a fitness thing or just a coincidence? We'll find that if they do the same in, in the third that... Princes can go just that little bit longer, um, but 
if they let Payne run amok in the first 15 minutes, it's probably not going to matter. A couple of quick scores around the rest of the Division 1. We do our around the grounds. Thanks to Soup and Save, one hour delivery seven days a week. Um, Tea Tree Gully, Old Ignatians and the Wolves, I think they are Old Ignatians, is their designator. 7547 are Old Ignatians. Tea Tree Gully, 5232. Tea, Tea Tree Gully are the Wolves, actually, Phil. They are too, but I reckon Anchor. Old Iggy's. I'm Old sure Iggy's. And look, what am I looking forward to 2022? Calling some footy from Karen Ralton Oval. Mm. That's going to be magnificent. Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, also, enjoy going out to Largs. Uh, 3 4 22 are Port Districts at the half leading Glenunga. 3 straight 18. So just a four point lead in a low scoring game. No updates from Brighton, Goodwood, or St. Peter's Rocks. Um, it's round one. It'll happen. I will say about Glenunga, Phil, they've played a very defensive style of game yeah, last year yeah. we commented them we once did. and we uh, we found that they really pressed uh, stacked behind the footy and on the back of the first half score what was it again 3-4 three, to 3-0 three, 3-4 nil. Three, to 3-0 three, nil. I'd suggest to you that that game plan is still being rolled out this year in Division 1. Yeah, well, look, and look, you can't say it hasn't worked for them. Yes, they came unstuck in the Div 2 Grand Final, but I mean, they're an interesting side. They've come up so quickly, and usually at some point during that rise, you come a cropper. They did two years ago not winning a game of the nine-game mm. Div 2 season, but of course, no consequence. <laughs> Had a chance to rebuild and, and um, take out the minor premiership. Good year to finish bottom, that one, Phil. Absolutely, and a, not exactly... Well, you're always happy to win a premiership regardless of the year. Maybe not a great year to finish second. Usually you do get that consolation prize of a promotion. Mm. Uh, it wasn't going in 2020, but hey, we were glad just to get some footy off and running. Goal scorers, Phil? Goal scorers, oh, what have we got here? Well, they're all individuals for Prince Alfred, Slee, Murdoch, Wicks and Garrells. For um, Paynham Nord Union, Jacob Campbell with two. Harrison Viney, probably the key forward uh, with two. Cooper Young, Louis Clem and Lachlan Matthias uh, with one apiece. So good spread for both sides, just not enough of them for Princes. Better players for both sides. Um, geez, it's really going to be difficult. We've got three awards to give away today, folks. Mm. One, one is the um, um, Mosley best team man yep and I'll tell you who might, who might get that was an early contender the lad who ran back with a fly to the ball um, uh, Manny Nye Matt Manny Nye, Nye. Yep. yep so he will certainly be a contender a couple of really and then backed it up with a really brave effort in the bottom of a pack in the middle of the ground about a minute or two later I was pretty impressed with that um, and our other award $100 voucher is for the best on ground and then we have an award for... For the play of the day, and, and, the and day. that's mine to choose. And um, There was a play very early on where Ben Salford picked up the ball, no one stood on the mark, and he pinpointed a pass, in deep kick inside 50 to a man on the lead who kicked the goal. Um, and look, i be honest, I usually pick my play of the day when I wake up and do it in the second half. Mm. Oh yeah, that's right, I've got to pick that play. If, if this turns out to be dull and boring, that's it at the moment. Not mm. that I expect this second half to be. If anything, I expect it to be pretty full. I'm interested to see, I'm interested to see which team will tire what? first. Can, can Paynham be a nuisance for the full four quarters, or will the class of princes uh, guide them home? Why does our family director always put the telly, the camera back on us when I've got a f face I, full of food? I, uh, that's why I don't eat. <laughs> I don't eat at the football anymore. The Italian <laughs> stallion, I tell you, he's trying to get stitch me up every way. I have a number one rule in commentary: the mic, the mic is always <laughs> on, mm. and I'm going to have to extend that to us. The camera could always be on. Mm. So, yes, indeed. Well, we hope you're enjoying this game at home as equally as we are here today. It's an intriguing contest at halftime. The pre-game favourite was clearly Prince Alfred, but the Paynham boys have come to play. No question about Indeed. that. The big weekend of uh, footy coming back in all its facets. The showdown got us underway beautifully last night. Sandville started Adelaide Footy League, the Adelaide Footy League women's. Uh, plenty of country leagues as well. Great to have it back. And we do thank the Banner Crew, our match day sponsor, for bringing you this coverage. The third quarter in your commentary with Sean Jackson. Cam Giles up against Matthias. Giles it is. He gets it decisively. Ben Sawford, we saw a lot of that in the first quarter. Gets it. Kicks around the corner on his left. The centre-half forward. Dowd, good position. Spoils the ball. 
to Oscar Clark, but it's Paynham Norwood Union who end up with it with Cooper Young around the corner on the left foot. It heads out of bounds and they we will get a restart. And didn't take long for uh, Sawford to uh, get back into the game, did it? Not at all. First touch, first clearance, first inside 50s all with the hometown Falcons. Um, we have a little bit of a breeze. Don't think it's strengthened to any great degree. No, definitely not. Pretty pleasant day to be playing football, I reckon. Sun's gone behind some clouds. Here we go. Paynham Norwood Union have it now. Oh, beautiful uh, manoeuvre there by Brad McKenzie showing his class. Off hands in front of the goal square. And that was um, McNamara who got in a little bit of trouble. Umpire circles and says that. Nah. I'll ball it up. 20 metres out. Opening minute of the first quarter. Done for the third quarter. Done the little sidestep a couple of times, Brad McKenzie, hasn't he? He's... Um, the yeah. beauty of being a left footer, you can slip blokes. Dowwood takes it out of the ruck. Can't clear it, although the, the coach is there, I think, pity. Mitch Larson heads towards the boundary line. Out in search of Jordan Neal. He can't keep it in, but uh, been pretty impressed with Seb Bauer back there with the orange boots filler. He gives away a little bit of size and height, doesn't he? Have a look at the, the match up there on Jordan Neal. I reckon he'd be... 15, 20 kilos lighter, but he's he's been yeah. terrific for him in the back half. Missing Neil's been moved up forward. He's done a reasonable amount of work in the ruck. So Paynham go forward now. Nice kick. Good defence by per Perryman, the ex-skipper. Hits it on the left foot. That's his natural leg. Unable to keep it out of bounds. Under the new rule, which is applicable to B and C grades in our competition this year, that would actually be a free kick to yep. Prince Alfred. I personally would like to see it come in at A grade level. That is another debate for another day. Yeah, well, it certainly was a radical change when the Sandville introduced it. And uh, a, a lot of people, when they first see it, don't like it. Um, it grows on you. It, at least it did on me. Yep. Uh, once you get a guess to what's going on. The kick forward by Webb. Mackenzie Only as Slee. far as Mackenzie Slee, who's back where I expected him to be. Of course, he did score one of the goals in that second quarter. Been good too, hasn't he? Yeah, if it gets dark in that back pocket later today, he'll, his boots will keep us well illuminated. Uh, Pitt off the ground kicks it forward. Is McNamara. But Payne of Norwood with some clear hands and some space and a little bit of run. Salford ran into Wicks. That's trouble. Cavalry arrives. Prince's ball. Okay, jolly it is. Nice marks and lined up on the half forward line as well. Plays on now, switches to the far side. Oscar Clark here. Sorry, I should say the near side. He lowers his eyes. Is he good enough? It's a good defence from Payne. And again, in pursuit, hot pursuit, is Sam Buckham for Prince Alfred. Unlucky. I'll tell you what he has done. He's affected a sore ankle for his direct opponent. We often in see that in basketball, don't we? <laughs> that, you know, the, the oak, they leave the other opponent without ankles anymore, and that was sort of what happened there. Yeah. yeah so Theo looks a little bit ginger, even though he's Italian. So, go figure. <laughs> Louis Clem hits it in the middle of the ground. Ball bobs up, ends up with um, Sam Buckham. He goes now to the far side of the ground in the direction of, uh, sorry, Brett Ansel. No one able to take the ball cleanly. The umpire's having to do a power of work early in this quarter. There's been quite a few restarts. Very even in the midfield battle at this stage. Sawford and Mackenzie come out the play. Trengove and Jolly, you'd expect nothing less. Oh, there's a clunk. That's a good Robinson. Clunk. Now watch his hands on the ball, folks. Just something I picked up earlier. Not sure whether it was just a an unusual kick or that is his generic kicking style, I think. Is goalless thus far? Right. And he's had, had some couple shots, shots, hasn't he? Yeah. I think he's the one behind. He's missed another one. Two behind. So he's two behinds and one out of bounds on the full. Um, is that the difference in the ball game? Not quite, but a fair chunk of that margin. Yeah, it's very windy up here. So I hope that's not coming through our microphones for the people at home. <laughs> the wind... Um, I'm not sure what's happened there. Might have been a cyclone. We've been a bit luckier than some of our eastern states oh with the weather, goodness. that's for sure. Yeah. A couple of sports grounds I know in Lismore 
um, destroyed the first time they started clean up and yep destroyed again absolutely heartbreaking stuff yeah it is indeed so sometimes you're just great that you can play on a day like today and just get out there and call it as we're seeing here the kick towards that scoreboard and the two 20s go at it by the boundary a couple of people standing up there under a tree watching um, they're well scattered around this ground various good viewing points so no one yet to score a goal, Phil, five minutes into the third. Yeah, well, Princes have actually got a score in regulation time. <laughs> I don't know what oh, that you'd call the first 20 minutes. There's a chance here. Kick inside 50. Smothered from behind. Smart spot from behind by Bauer. They're, they're not clearing it, though. If they don't clear it soon, it's, Princes are going to do something. They're that good. They're going to have to make use of the opportunity. Umpire says, ball it in. Hainham Norwood Union player on his haunches. And we're going to stop play until medical staff can come and assist. Hainham player, Phil? Yeah, look, number is um, out of view at the second, so I'm not going to guess. But they haven't moved. Um, Hopefully just winded. Yeah, In I that position, I'd suggest that's what the case is. And Thomas uh, Altamare. Is the winded play? Yes, you sort of. That's that's the position usually you're supposed to go when you're winded to yep. get the diaphragm working again. It's some more. He doesn't dun, feel dun, like dun, singing dun, right dun, now, dun, Jacko. Dun, I can dun, tell you that. It's some more. In Out fact, tomore. they're getting the uh, Andrew Crosby is giving Al Tamora and some um, instructions. He's pointing to the sideline and saying, "You have to get off." And he's saying, "I can barely breathe, and you want me to walk." Yeah, funnily enough, they've brought the new player in. I think he might have, there might be a blood rule because Could you wouldn't be. stop the game for this if it's not the blood rule because he's been allowed to be replaced. But, yeah. Um, oh, yes, he's got, yes, he's got a, uh, um, a fair mark, like a cricket ball size mark above his, to be his left eye. And uh, yes, that is, <laughs> when rule. you see it, Jacko, you realise that is definitely a blood rule. Yeah. So I guess that's why he has come off across the oval. Could yep. have walked the boundary. It's been replaced. The skipper, uh, John Giannini, out in the ground. And hopefully a test for the Paynham Norwood Union medical staff. Doesn't look too serious for mine. Bandage, head bandage, and uh, yeah, just, right to go. Just don't wipe it on your jumper because you'll have to change the jumper. <laughs> <laughs> Take Prince it away, Jack. Prince Alfred first clearance. Come running out of that beautifully was Cameron Giles. He got real speed for a big fella. Mm. He wheels onto the right foot. Hits the top of the square. Looking for Riley Robinson. Oh, he had first crack at it. Just couldn't quite hang on to it. Now the ball's on the deck. This is where Payne have been good. And again, they're able to clear their ball out. So, Prince Alfred need a little bit more from their little men. On the ground. Jolly. Whips it on the left foot for Robinson. Good punch. McNamara. That's what they've been searching for. Prince Alfred, a man on the ground, and they do get one there. And Lockie McNamara spins on his right foot and kicks his first for the day, Phil. Yeah, first. More importantly, first for the half. Yeah, first for the half. <coughs> first time Princes have kicked one this early in the quarter this game, and this is a narrow margin as it's been since quarter time, back to 14 points. I um, mean, look, at Princes, whatever, they, they were able to establish a wall was bolted up there for five minutes and as much as they've struggled to convert up forward just sheer weight of inside 50s eventually did its toll nice snap from McNamara yep so they close the gap ever so closer 14 points is the difference Cam Giles first hands on that follows his work up McNamara has two kicks at that on the stat sheet so I'm not sure whether our stats bloke will walk that down as two Ends up with Sammy Buckham, who's been impressive. He composes himself, lowers the eyes. Hits up the young kid, I'm, I'm going to say, Phil. Tommy Seals, is it number 13 or not? Uh, 11, Joshua Garrells, who has a goal. Joshua Garrells. And I'll tell you what, I'm not sure I've ever met a Garrells before. Yourself? <laughs> not that I can think of, Jack. <laughs> Let me go through the 1,200 games I've commentated and see if I've done a Garrells before. Oh, I just have not come across that, okay. that surname yeah. before. Okay. So, the first Garrells that ever walked on the football field. Joshua, about 48 metres. Has a crack at it, but a little bit skinny in the end. And Paynham. 
<laughs> are under siege, Phil. They are, and it's not all bad for Princes because it's down their end of the field and they've managed to lock it in well. So Every single player within this half of the ground, not yep. one single player past the centre line. Yep, it's, it's as much congestion as you can really see on a footy field. Yep. All right, no one on the mark so much, so a chance to step out of the box and kick it long. Good and mark. Good, important mark. So here's your chance for Maxi Wagner. He goes the short kick, but accurate in front of the scoreboard. So Payne, we're going to try and work it out of here methodically, which probably when, when the teams have a wall, you have to do, because if you just blaze away, that's where the numbers are with your opponents. You're just inviting a, re a return. But they're still deep inside the defensive 50. A bit slow to get going there, weren't they? Yeah, and they're really not sure what options they've got. They'll play the percentages, go long down the boundary line where there's some big men, Matthias one of them. And in the end, uh, there's now a Princess player on their haunches, not too right with the world. Sawford is waiting to ooh, maybe go high, I thought, on that occasion. For a player coming out with the ball, umpire says he'll ball it up. In front of the scoreboard, which usually attracts a whole heap of kids doing it, uh, there's three on the scoreboard this afternoon. That was Pat Singleton. Looks like he's OK, though, Phil. Yeah. And they come away from the clearance out the back. Paynham, uh, uh, sorry, Prince Alpha, but Paynham are good enough. Um, and in the end, they win the free kick. Might be Sawford. No, I don't think it is Sawford. Uh, it is Owen Thomas, number ben five. Owen Thomas goes long down the line like they did last time. Didn't get a great result from the last time. Not a great result this time. Although they're under a bit of heat now, Prince Alfred and Payne have got it. Um, Paul Lowe kicks around the corner. Good mark in the back pocket, Prince Alfred. They've got the numbers out this side. If they can get it quickly, they do. Get one, got the other player free. Still have another short option here if they can get it to him. Come on, quickly. you got to pat it. Kick it to him. Yeah. For God's sake, man. You had Pat Singleton sitting there for half an hour, and then you end up kicking long down the line. Is, That's is, is that just lack of faith in a late yep. inclusion? <laughs> well, it shouldn't be. Once he comes, he comes into the side, he comes into the side. If, if that was Jack Trengove... He would have kicked it to him. Yep. Yep. Yep, and that's something the coach shows him during the week and says, Oscar, we kick that yeah. every day, every time. If he's wearing maroon, kick it to him. Yep. All right, throw in, 60 metres out from Payne. Who Do they need a steady? Yeah, probably they do. A saw for just a bouncing kick. Skedaddle's a couple, including Dowood. He's first to recover, gets down low. S sort of got a semi-possession away without giving away a free, only as far as Matty Nye. Will he hurry it up here? No, he seems quite content. There's only... Uh, Five players behind him, only one of those Prince Alfreds. He goes sideways to Patrick Sanzo. Sanzo into the T saucer to Giannini. Giannini wanted to go wide quickly, really was put off from that. And now he is the last line. Every player in front of him. Kenzie Slee coming off the ground yeah. field. Looks a bit worse for wear. Interesting to note the two Paynham, uh, sorry, the two Prince Alfred trainers. Wearing bright pink tops. I've never seen that before with trainers on them. Oh, Very the, enthusiastic. The pink is what the trainers used to wear. The new right. red or something. I can't remember what. Hayden Jolly's managed to take a mark. Defensive 50. Just thought Payne and Nordian with that. They had about two minutes with the ball, but really didn't have a lot of urgency. And they're not far enough in front, and there's not there's too much time left to play keepings off. Underground hand pass. There's some urgency. There's a shot on goal. That was from Jacob Campbell. He'll be 2-2 for the afternoon, along with Harry Viney. That's the Falcons' first score of the half. It's a behind. Yeah, so the the, uh, the Paynham girls or medical staff are also wearing pink. So it is obviously the preferred colour. Ball is locked inside the back pocket. Prince Alfred long down the line. Paynham have all the answers. They've taken that ball. Mark, uh, nice mark. They go back inside, deep inside the forward 50. Good contest from both players there. Ball spills to the front. That's where you expect to be for a little bloke. I think it's low maybe. He kicks it around the corner. Oof. Plenty of numbers there. Just not able to hold us line. And it goes through for another point for Paynham. And they are now attacking their goals. You've got to take advantage when you've got the opportunity. 
Just the one goal kicked two princes. And what are we, 15 minutes in. So has been a quarter, as you said, Jacko, missed opportunities. Mm. Um, high kick, good mark to the coach, Craig Pitt. Was a good mark, wasn't it? Opposed Beauty. to uh, Seb Bauer. Different to the Falcon, he let go through in the That's second quarter. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All hands on that. You're not going to let him forget that, are you? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> All hands on that one towards uh, Neil, who had double teamed. Uh, Theo just got the kick away. Didn't go too far, though. Perryman, the hand pass from ground level. Going in there is your mate, Garrells. So I just want to point out something that happened in the last aerial contest, if we can get a replay of the last long kick. For <laughs> Prince Alfred, guys, I'm putting our uh, you are. floor manager under a bit of pressure there. We'll get, try and get it. Four Prince Alfred blokes. Hands up. Go front and centre, <laughs> and all pretty much on the same line. So they just need to try and stagger the crumb a little bit. Mm. Paying them now have it. Bring it back into the centre. Matty Nye kicks it nicely. Now we're almost in the middle of the ground, and Todd Panoho has it. Nice kick out into space. He's looking for Viney. He can't get it. The ball goes front and centre, as you'd expect. And who's there? The biggest bloke almost on the ground, and Will Dowwood. So the little blokes have got to get the front and centre up there in the front half for Paynham. Still alive, though. They've got some numbers. And in the end, Sam Buckham relieves all the pressure and kicks out. Riley Robinson, a good pair of hands. Yep, he's come a long way up to get that, but the defence needed a bit of a hand because it's been up Paynham's end of the field for the last three or four minutes after being Prince's for good of six or seven. Now it's at centre wing. It's a 50-50 ball with a lot of players. Um, so a Prince's player taken high umpire, though, didn't uh, concur or didn't see it. Buckham, he gets boot into the ball. Inside forward 50, but... Paynham Nord Union are there with Sanzo. Sanzo. Did it well, didn't he? he di well, no, he didn't really because it looked good until the kick lobbed in the hands of <laughs> Robinson. Either he's working hard or he's playing a bit further upfield. He's taken some good grabs, but his kicking's let him down, so maybe he's got moved. Yeah, not a bad move to move him out to centre forward where he's kicking for goal won't hurt you as much, and he certainly yeah. he's found it, although he's now heading to, back to the full forward area and he be just went for by Jack O'Leary. Looks like it was a, a, a day trip rather than a permanent uh, movement. Sawford to Panoho. He's starting to come into the game as well. Front and centre. Looking for a clean take. Prince Alfred do it. Long again towards Robinson. Almost gives away a free kick. Umpire doesn't see it. Play on. Nice take from Prince Alfred. And sometimes luck can be your fortune. Is that what they say? Luck. Luck's a fortune. Luck's a fortune. And that is one of those and cases because I'm not sure he meant that kick. There's a little bit extra happening off the ball, which Andrew Crosby, umpire Andrew Crosby, comes in and sorts out. Robinson coming off for a bit of a spell. Garrells looking for two. So who is it, Phil? Garrells. Garrells. Tanny makes no mistake. Lovely kick. He goes halfway up the post, straight through the middle diddle. Joshua Garrells. He's going to put the Garrell name on the football map. No question even, about that. If he hasn't done so already. <laughs> the, football <map. laughs> the football map, okay. Uh, Fair enough. I understand what you're saying. You with me? You're saying. I am with you. you. With? I'm always with you. I'll back you. All right, good. I'll back you. Six. Looking forward to calling footy with your season, Jack. I'm sure we're going to have a fair bit of fun. We will indeed. Next centre bounce, vitally important. Yeah. Look at the midfield. Eight points. Jolly, Trengove. They're with Jordan Neal. Can he get hand on it? Bit of an even contest. Nice. Effort there by Paynham's Ben Sawford. And the umpire has decided to have another go at it. A few more numbers swarm around, so it'll be harder to get the ball out this time. We'll see restart after restart, but Trengos does it beautifully. Lays it out the back to Oscar Clark, and he kicks it to Pity. Not able to take it. She's unlucky. He had a couple of bites of that cherry. Still in it. Jolly, look at him try and storm through the pack, and he does it beautifully. And then lays it off. Kick in the centre half, a full forward. There's two there for Paynham. If one of them can take it, Murdoch it is that's got it. Oh. <laughs> Just need a one to take the body and the other one to take the mark in that contest. That's one you do, that's one you do practice quite often at training, the 2v1 for that exact situation. But good defence from Paynham there. Man, under a fair bit of pressure. 
Time on to the third quarter. Often we're many games are won and lost, and Princes have kicked two goals to this quarter. Paynham have kicked just the one behind. So again, one of the sides goalless in the first 20 minutes of a quarter. And what was a 14-point quarter-time lead and a 21-point half-time lead is back to seven. And it's down in front of that scoreboard down Prince Alfred's edge of the world. And they're coming back with some breeze. Bucking with the kick. Another inside 50. How will it sit? Sits all right not for Paynham. No, uh, Nye has it. His kick finds a target. Maxi Wagner's he's marked the ball well today, hasn't he? The, the marking in patches has been fantastic today, mm. and Wagner's has. been right up there. Got long arms. He uh, helps. Looks like he's out of position. Speaking of long arms, <laughs> there's Will Dowd. <laughs> Three training sessions before today's game. Yeah. That's his pre-season. Recently a father, a couple of weeks ago. Well done, and Will's been a stalwart for nine years, I think, now for the Prince Alfred. Old collisions in amongst a lot of footy with North Adelaide and Norwood. Well, he's also a very, very good cricketer for Prince right. Alfred Old Collegian. So that's where he spends his summer. It's not on the couch, Jack. He's oh. actually out there cricket. Okay, player. well, the only reason he's playing footy is, is his wife didn't want him sitting at home on her couch. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a f he's not alone in that. <laughs> oh. Kick inside 50. Two on one, Princes. They should clear easily, and they do. Slee's got a little bit of work, probably more than he should Free have had. Kick. That wasn't the greatest of clearing kicks. Uh, Slee and opponent are... Going at it, that's Sawford. Yep. Sawford's taken. Who's give? I, I don't know who's given away what free in that. Yeah, he should have got the free kick first of all. Um, Slee. It was held well after he got rid of the footy and has every right to be a bit upset with that free kick by well, the umpire. But even, hey, he got the poor kick from the teammate. Then yeah. he got a, a free that he should have deserved not given, and, and then he's given away one. And he's just come off back on the ground after being going off saw. So he's probably thinking, what the. Yeah, 2022 is going to be fantastic. Uh, yeah. Kick in finds Perryman in the back pocket. Don't pay the Perryman. And again, 22 minutes 20, and Payne are goalless in this third quarter, and Princes are back in the contest. Kick finds Wicks, 60 metres out. Thought about going on with it. That Eventually play on? takes the more conservative option. It hasn't been as many changes or switches of play this quarter. Along with both sides of going long down the line, although this time he d is able to find space to Mackenzie Sleet. And he has the ball almost on the true wing position. Looking for options inside. Plenty of players gesticulating. I love that word, but he decides to go long towards the skipper. Straight over his head, though. And ends up with uh, Benny Sawford. Trengove almost gets it back for Prince Alfred. They're all at it. Numbers are jumping on the top of the ball. I can see McNamara in there for Prince Alfred, and I can see Patrick Sanzo in there for the Paynham Nord, and he comes up with a footy in his hand. A goal either way would be massive as three-quarter time looms larger. Uh, over the oh. shoulder, Charles, and does so. Didn't give it back to me. Technically correct. Wow, we and I'm just glad we play in a state where those penalties are 25 and not 50. Yeah, correct. Pretty Ansel, bit stiff there. Watch Jolly kick here. What will he do with it? Long. Oh. oh Threw numbers. some hands. They got a number here in the pocket. Pick, has Pick kicked the goal today, Phil? Uh, no, no. The goal scorers for Prince Alfred. All uh, Gorillas has kicked two singles to Slee, Murdoch, Wicks, and McNamara. Right. Bound drum has come in a fair way here. Robinson's biggie doing the ruck work for Prince Alfred up against Matthias. Gets front spot. Tries to lay it off. Prince are under the pressure. Oh, that could be holding the ball. It is. Um, bit unlucky there. Old oh, Brittany Ansel, who's a terrific lad. But Blue Boots, beautiful tackle. And he's, Sam Buckham. He's not in this. You don't like this. I remember this from watching some highlights I over don't. the summer, where you get the free, you could pass off, and you turn your back on the players. I don't think there's ever any need to turn your back on the goals and what's in front of you, Phil. But anyway, let's see. Sam Buckham and uh, has a pub named after him, of course. The Arms, <laughs> Buckham Arms. <laughs> it's it's not good enough. But it, tell you what, it broaches the cap a little bit closer. As the well, it's a one-kick ball game. Yep. 7-5 to 6-5. And we are 25 minutes 
and not for the first time today, the Falcons are hanging out for the siren. They're under a little bit of pressure, the Falcons, at the moment. What can they do with this kicking? Oh, Plays on beautifully. <laughs> Patrick Santo. One bounce, two bounce. Long. Who's there? No one, Phil. Yeah, except all in red. They centre the ball. Here's their chance. They've got it with Jolly. The last person painting would want with it in free space. Look That's that why. Kick. Visionary pinpoint pass to Craig Pitt, who, as we mentioned earlier, is goalless, but that could change in about 30 seconds. Yeah, and and he walked back with his back he to He did, the too. Yeah, I did ask him during the week, is he dirty on his brother leaving and heading out to Geelong for the year? He said, no. Surprise me. Call it, Phil. Okay. This to tie the ball game. He has. Can you believe it? Four unanswered goals, and we are locked away. 7-5-47. 7-5-47. That's on your sip and save scoreboard. One hour delivery, seven days a week. Yeah, beautiful kick from Craig Falcon Pitt. No doubt about that one. That went straight through the middle, post high. And that's what you want from your, your coach, your playing coach, when the game's yeah. tough to step up. But what about the kick from Jolly? If I pinpoint him there in amongst a heap of players, this is where you'd expect Jolly to step up. He's in the middle now. He's, he's in there with Trengove, and he's also in there with Blue Boots, Buckham Arms. Giles, first hands on this one. Brad McKenzie around the corner. On the left. Into the, into the forward 50 for Paynham. Prince Alfred there first. No one able to take the ball cleanly. Bob's this way, Bob's that way. And in the end, the same umpire mm. is having to do a power of work. That would probably be my Simon Black Academy player of the day, actually. That jolly pass to Pitt and the conversion. I like it. Just like not it. sure who you got to go and get to give it to, but yes. that's <laughs> your problem, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to the awards in the final quarter. It's going to be one of those interesting ones because it's so close. Oh, how's the tackle? We can't get too Hold ahead of it. <laughs> yeah. Haven't seen a lot of holding the balls today. No, it was almost a sling tackle, but I think it was there. Todd Panoho. It's stiff, but um, I tell you what, the Bucking Arms is making a play for it, isn't he? That's a nice kick yeah. into the corridor. Have a look oh, at the wow. numbers. The defensive action from Paynham now under siege a little bit. Around the corner, Mackenzie Slee comes up that way, this way, that way. Good enough. <laughs> In the end, he kicks it to Mitch Larson's about 25 metres. The siren sounds. It's almost fairy tale stuff. Paynham yet to score this quarter. And Prince Alfred on the roll. He kicked this one. And this will put them a goal in front. And in front, I think, for the first time today, Phil. Exactly right. Paynham kicked the first score and have not trailed today. So Mitch Larson, we saw him deliver a, a beautiful front and hip and shoulder on the border of the second quarter. Now on the end of the third quarter, Kenny, he can't. Left foot, he does put him in front though. But yeah. not, and John Giannini gives him some words of advice as he's walking past. Probably was, mate, you're supposed to aim for the white sticks. Not the red ones. Huge quarter for the Reds. Three goals, five. They kicked there. Held Payne to just one behind. They turned the 21-point deficit into a one-point lead. We head to three-quarter time. You're with Phil Hurden and Sean Jackson. We'll be back after the break. You're watching the Adelaide Footy League. Thanks to Filming Footy. Woo. Simon Black Academy is a three-pillared program that combines both education and Australian rules football. Available in four states throughout Australia, the program covers three key areas. 
The first is an education component through the Torrens University. The second is the development of the participants' AFL skills, helping the player to become the best player they can possibly be. And the third is a leadership and growth program. The Academy is a perfect opportunity for participants who like football, they get exposed to AFL coaches and mentoring opportunities as they do their university degree. Based down at Norwood Oval and the Ark at Campbelltown, it is a fantastic program for anyone interested in sports management who loves football and wants to extend their education with a Torrens University degree. Feel free to check out the website simonblack.com.au Welcome back, folks. Just checking some scores around the Adelaide Footy League. I've got one for you at three-quarter time. It is uh, Old Ignatius leading Teacher Galley by 14 points. But the game of the day is right here at Paynham Over. Phil Hurt and, J and Sean Jacko Jackson. We can see um, New coach. Jeremy Cheney um, earning his keep right now. <laughs> he's, uh, yeah. he's done a great game plan to keep the Falcons in this one. They were heavy underdogs for ours. What do you say at this point when you've done the hard yards and you've really got no reward at this point to show for it? Well, I think you've summed it up there brilliantly. That's exactly what he'd be tapping into. Boys, we, we came out as underdogs. We're under the pump. Massive turnover from last year. We've held up exceptionally well in the first half. We don't want to throw that terrific first half away by not running the game out. Third quarter, what didn't go our way? You're not going to have it all on your own terms against mm. the side like Prince Alfred. you just got to be able to weather that storm. They're coming home into the breeze, whatever factor that is. A couple of interesting stats, Phil. Um, Jolly getting his hands again on the ball that quarter with six touches. Mackenzie can, uh, um, is consistent again with another five, but Sawford back into the game with nine touches that quarter. Good around the clearances. Clearances are pretty even, but the, the, the most interesting stat statistic for that quarter was Prince Alfred Old Collegians, nine intercept marks took 26 marks for the quarter and five inside 50 and conversely Payne and Nord Union did not take one mark inside their forward yep. 50. Like they, they flipped a switch there and Prince has worked out Payne's game and yep. uh, a lot of those intercept marks around that 50 metre arc so yeah game on this is where I guess all those hard yards in the pre-season or lack of them depending on how COVID was handled come to fruition because they've uh, been a pretty hard fought game um, very entertaining, hope you're enjoying it. Banner Crew, our match day sponsor, go to thebannercrew.com.au. Say good day to Jason, tell him that we sent you. And uh, apologies to Police Credit Union for the boundary ride crosses or lack of them. We'll, we'll fix that up when Lambo returns. We're waiting for Riley Robinson to make his way out onto the ground. Not sure where he was at that's, three quarter that, time. That's very nice of everyone. It's very to nice do of the that. umpire to do that. Yeah, I might uh -huh. have had to go to the toilet or something, Riley. No, the feeling. Let's go, final quarter. You're with Jacko. All right, here it is, folks. This is where the game's won and lost. The last quarter, people will tell you the third. It's one in the last. Milne, hands on the ball. Jolly out of the centre. Two prime midfielders going head to head in the, mid in the middle. Love it. It's one for the ages, the battle of the midfields here. I'd suggest to you that they are as good as any midfields in the competition, both of these sides. And once uh, the big fellow returns, Cam Milne for Paynham. Interestingly, the scoreboard, Jacko, yep. there's been an adjustment. Okay, so we it's, are tied. it's level. Jolly into an open goal. Watch this kick, folks. <laughs> Hayden Jolly. I tell you what, he has willed himself into the game and that kick just straightened up, kicked it beautifully. He is, if you're looking for someone to show how to kick the footy, Aiden Jolly, one of the best exponents of the foot of the kick in any competition, and that gets them back in the lead or into the lead for the first time yep. by a goal. 
Yep, so obviously the way it works is that the scoreboard can be wrong. The goal umpires meet at the break and they either wave their flags if everything's correct or they wander over to the scorers and amend it, which is what has happened during our break. Back in the middle, Princes lead for the first time today with the wind at their backs and momentum high on their side at the moment. The clearance, not a particularly, um, well, uh, penetrating one by uh, Garrells, but... And there's a hard footy on the attacking side. Umpires found the free kick to go the way of Panem Nord. You can see what urgency, what run they've got left in the legs. That Sawford can't kick it to himself and he can't even kick it to a teammate. That's intercepted. Here come the red men on the rebound. Long kick inside 50. Robinson oh. at front position couldn't clunk it. Pitt is met from behind and from the front. It's a pit sandwich on Falcon Bread. And we've got a ball up 40 metres out straight in front. He makes good position, Riley Robinson. When he can start taking those marks regular, he is going to be a handful for any team in this competition. He's, he's a good six foot three, I reckon. He's given away a lot of size, Jack O'Leary. And uh, Chase Bauer obviously not playing today would probably be a better matchup for pain and perspective. Anyway, they come away from this stop, stoppage, but only as far as the man Sammy Buckingham Arms. Back to pain him now, though. They kick it out. G and Innie, the skipper's there. Gets it, drives it, reverse tumble punt. Intercepted straight away by Prince Alfred. They come back towards the top of the square. Robinson's there, but again, it's um, Jack O'Leary punches the ball towards the boundary line. Taken by Ben Owen Thomas. He does the defensive thing, but it's ended up with McNamara or Pitt. I'm not sure which one. Oh, real courage there. Real courage. He got the free kick, I think. He has. It looked like Prince Alfred got another goal, but a fantastic effort by um, uh, Benny Sawford. And he is certainly putting himself into contention for the best on ground honours. No real clear-cut favourite across the four quarters, but mm. he's had three pretty good ones, just one quieter quarter. All right, paying him have the ball. That field mentioned under siege. The Reds are trying to land up, not quite the knockout punch, but... A decisive one, having got their noses in front, spills out of bounds in front of the Paynham dug. What do you call that? Dugout? It's not right. Yeah, that'll do. Dugout? Yeah, everyone knows what I mean. Throw in. Coach's box. Coach's box. Thank you, Jacko. So it is. They've. It's. I reckon that scoreboard's playing havoc with my mind at the moment because it's added a behind that I don't think was actually there, but. Anyway. Just had to go on the left then, uh, young Sammy Buckham. Just trust your left foot. Didn't have to be fancy. It would have been another 30, 40 metres down the ground with a quick kick under pressure. Throw in. Oh, the Rapanum Ruckman was retarded and by an opponent. And Sorry? Oh. He was held up. He was held. Um, but umpire was actually unsighted and on that occasion just looking at the angles kick down by Paynham just tapped out of bounds by Will Charlton playing the percentages Phil yep. well, making sure if you can't win the battle your opponents don't win the battle Jolly coming off for a well earned break umpire throws it in Trengo quick kick under pressure the Coach is there, Pitt, but he's behind his player and Payne and relieve the ball again. <laughs> Plenty of numbers at this contest. Charles fierce, fierce attack on from both players there. <laughs> Charles and Matthias won't be sending each other Christmas cards. No, not a lot of love, a lot of love there, Phil. Bit of behind the play, by play. Yeah, it up okay, Matthias. He does that nicely to Louis Clem. He can't get it out. Plenty of numbers there for both sides. Can anyone take it out cleanly? Pain them, do it well. Giannini onto the boot quickly. Goes to full forward. Oh, just not able to take the mark in the end. Was a, they needed that one. Will Charlton. It is now who relieves the pressure for Prince Alfred out the far side. In the direction of Lockie McNamara. What can he do? Plenty. Gets it. Swoops around. Kicks it around the corner towards Craig Pitt. That's a good win for Princes, actually. It was. I think Pain them had the extra player. Yeah. But McNamara was just able to get it out of that area enough. Yeah, good defence from the Prince Alfred Old Collegians. The Red Men, as they're known. Throw in. Someone in the paper called them the Old Reds. I'd, I'd never heard that term until I read it. So, hmm. I mean, yes, they are old, and yes, they wear red, so I guess it kind of works. 
Mm, probably maroon, actually, more than reds. But uh, well, that's the that's the other thing. I mean, there's the Queensland Reds in rugby union are the exact same colour. So Flinders Park, are known as the Red Men. Yeah, well, they that's the definitely red the, the red as you would appreciate it. But anyway, at least the good thing is we've got a very good clash today. <laughs> we were not going to confuse who's who in the zoo. Yep, the numbers are easy to read for both sides. So we and this is holding the ball coming up. Trengove, well, there's your combination. Trengove and Guerrero's the experienced AFL player. And a kid that we haven't seen before combining. It's be and 50 metres here. Taking a while to get the ball and get back up. That was Giannini, the captain, that was caught with it. Trengo has it. In front of our sip and save scoreboard. Princes by seven. See how Cameron was on the coach there for Paynham under... Under pressure, his first game here, he uh, would have been really pleased with what he saw in the first half. Not yeah. so much yet to score in the second half, or a goal anyway. Yeah, it's, you, know, you put in the context of a game, obviously, then you put in the context of the season. But right now, you're really focusing on this game. We're in the T-Saucer in the middle. Lockie Webb. He's really indecisive about it, then kicks it straight to Neil. Here's the turnover. Oh, there was an inside 50 begging because Robinson had the step but overcooked the kick. But it's, it's turnover city at the moment, Jacko. Maybe the first team to calm down might get the goal and win this game. We're back with Webb in the middle. Yeah, well, I wonder if that's fatigue, Phil, because yeah. there's another turnover and it's ended up with your man, Garrell, and then another turnover. This is Apple, Strawberry, Apricot turnover, you name oh, it. Yum. Gene, and he's got it. <laughs> Goes on the left. It's not his preferred. Hits the boundary line. Oof, geez, settle down, Sean. Settle down. Brad McKenzie <laughs> has it on the half forward. You know he'll try and step. He does. Didn't get around that time. Nice defence from the Prince Alfred Old Collisions there. They're still under the pump, though, and it stays alive for a short period of time. Trengove. How much ground does Trengove cover? He covers more ground as Mackenzie Slee he's makes his way to the pine, and he looks a little bit sore, Phil. He looks like he's doing the 20-kilometre walk. Yep. There's obviously something in the lower leg there, one of the ankles, feet, yeah, maybe. bone or something like that. Some drama. Tap to Dalwood. Dalwood the Rover. Who would have thought? Yeah, there you go. Well, who was it? It was a uh, Neil to Dalwood. That's almost an even match in height. And the mark on defensive 50. This is Murdoch, who's normally more sided further. He finds the coach in pit. Coach in pit. I like that. Yeah, okay. you got a whole season to work on that, Jacko. <laughs> Fest pit. <laughs> So they're keeping the ball off. They've got the lead. It's seven points according to our school, but I reckon it might be six. But hopefully it's not close enough for that to be an issue. Good mark. Good mark. There's Buckham, who's been impressive on debut at this level. Inside forward 50, bouncing ball to the chase to the light tower. Spills out of bounds will be a throw into a ball up. I think because they're, yeah, I think it's going to be a ball up. On a boundary throw, I'm sorry. Yeah, been very good, Sam Buckham. Is this his first game for the club, is it? I believe, yeah, he was listed as, a, as an in for this year. Yeah, so uh, it's, there he is again. Whips it around on the left. This time, no good. Intercepted by Theo, Theo T. He releases it into the centre of the ground now. What can they do with it? Paint him here. Nice, nice take. Handball over the top. Under a little pressure. Viney, what can he do? Around the corner. That's not bad. He's gone the barrel. Sure he meant that. It stays in for Prince Alvarez. <laughs> <laughs> One of the funnier things you've seen, and there'll yeah. be some heckling coming from the Paynham boys here. Well, that's the poor a old Tommy Sells in his first game for the club. Fell over his own feet, Phil. Yeah, well, he wasn't going to keep it anyway. He was thinking about that cricket, keep the six in or whatever. He's worried about running into that yeah. Paynham group of supporters there, I think. Look at Will Dowd again under the arm at the ruck contest. That is bizarre. Yes. Absolutely bizarre. Princes have found themselves a new rover. Yes. It's taken him... Until the last year of his career to realise he's a rover. Could be the best rover of all time. Yep. Now Jolly coming towards the ball. Oh, he's dropped what he should have taken. Has the umpire paid that? He hasn't. Jeez. He knows it. It's a good kick in. Important boundary throw in here. That kick was in from um, McNamara. Umpire lets that play go. Plenty of numbers around. Payne have got it now. Nice release. Gene Innie has it. Thanks. Good handball. Keeps it alive. Sanzo. Once again, Prince Alfred have all the answers. And Paddy Singleton, although he's smothered, around the corner on the left foot. 
It's like a reverse tumble punt. Oh. And it's ended up being a point. And that point could be important, Phil. It could be. Um, we've got about 10 minutes to work out our reward winners, I might add as well, because we don't have the ability to leave it to the last second because you've got to head down to the field. So uh, start putting that in the back of your mind when we're not calling. Right now we've got a game to call, and it's a tight one. It's by our scoreboard here. It's a one-goal game. And, yeah, just there was that point that Murdoch kicked that was brought back, and they changed the score. And I'm pretty right. sure there wasn't a behind to be had, so I don't reckon Princes have got seven. I actually reckon it's a five-point game, but, gee, I'm rusty. They're rusty. Everybody's rusty. Only the umpires, goal umpires know the actual result, so... Let's hope it doesn't come down to that last kick with no one knowing what's going on. We're back in it. There's plenty of players around the ball. And trying to keep it in. Gazelles has it. He got he got it hand passed by McKenzie. Kick inside 50s. Trengove got the hard ball. I reckon he got pushed in the back, but umpire was blind to that. They're letting a bit go here. Or is that just me, Jacko, the umpires in this final quarter? Yeah, and I think they are, and it's not a bad thing. Put the whistle away and let the boys play. Well, that they're trying to do, but it steps out of bounds, in which case the umpires do have to step in. Or maybe not. That's okay. I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah. The, the, the whistles have been muted. Anyway, Prince's ball. They'll clear that out of defence, and we've finally got some football in space. So they go nice now to... Um, a to Mackenzie Slee back on the ground not sure where to go goes inboard looking for those two players there in the end your mate Joshua Garrells on to a leading candidate for the BOG Sam Buckham's lowers the ice nicely and hits up Lockie McNamara so about 65 metres from goal what's he going to do he goes short as well into the middle of the ground hits up Will Charlton he's got players on the far side of the ground the defence is pretty poor here by paying him, he's got enough time to be able to spill the ball, Craig Pitt, and then still get a kick. Should have done a bit better than that, Pitty. All right, it sits with Max Wagner. Payne got a bit of work to do. They trail, that is definite. Across to Theo. Theodorakopoulos to Sawford, who was great early. Directed that play, Sawford, actually, so it was well done. He's Good, calm, experienced head on him. Trying to show his experience and calmness. In the end, the umpire says play on. So he has to kick it high. There's a lot of players under this. And Ooh. that was a Giles. I'm not sure how he didn't take the mark there. He's thinking the same thing. All righty. Here come Princes through the middle. Oscar Clark. Bang. To Buckham. Who's bounced off. I don't know how he did that, but he bounced off Owen Thomas. Kicked to forward 50. It's a Princes clunk. Is there an inside 50 mark to be had towards the hot spot? Mackenzie Slee broke the pack, got it away from Clem, and paint him clear momentarily. Oh, it's a game of wasted opportunities at the moment, Phil. Prince Alfred could have put this game to bed with the forward 50 entries they've had in the last five or six minutes. And their, their effort when the ball hits the ground hasn't been good enough. They should have locked it away, but... Paying them keep coming. Got to give them credit. Now they go inside their forward 50. A good effort. Good one-on-one -on -one battle there. Again, it's Sam Buckham. He's certainly playing his way into the best on ground honours. Again to Searles. Trengove. This will hit the mark. We know that. McNamara. What's he doing? Shutting down. Look at the numbers. Inside again. Buckham. He's had poisoning this quarter with the footy. He will have to go to the doctor at the end of the game. They're wasting time. Oh, far enough in front, and there's too much time on the clock to be just playing it, although they may be just slowing the game down a little bit. One more goal, and yeah, you're spot on, Jacko, but they're not there yet. No, he's got an option down the down the line. He goes that way, but this is where they've fallen downfield. When the ball's hit the ground, watch what happens. Yeah. This time it's out of bounds, so it's a better result for Prince Alfred, but the last few entries have just come out too easily, haven't they? We had 11 goals in the first half. Just four in the second half. Right. All to Prince Alfred. Okay. So Paynham finding it difficult to score. Mackenzie has it. Goes onto his right foot this time. Well spoilt by Pitt. 
The coach looks like he's actually gone behind the ball now, Phil. So a positional change there. Craig said, well, it's time I shored up this whole joint. The runner is actually pointing defensively to him as well. So I'm not sure if he's playing as a spare. I think he might be. Cam Giles as well smothered there by Seb Bauer, who's had a pretty good game, young fella. Giving away a lot of size today, and he's done a, an admirable job in the back half of Paynham Nord Union. Throw in. 60 out from goals. Most of the goals have been... Well, no, that's not true. I was thinking they've been to the left of screen, but Princess did kick a few to the right in that third quarter. One goal the margin. You think one more goal just might be enough? Well, it's got a bit of a feel of last night's game on at the showdown. Yeah. <laughs> kick high. There's the spare so both player Both teams for have got them. spare players back. Yep. Neither side's found a way to work through the defence. Yep, that's it. Giannini is free here in the middle of the ground. If they can get it to him, he's still free. Now being picked up by Wicks. He's looking for options. Got one, and the uh, Prince Alfred Blake has let him go. Pitt's in great position. Now they've got the numbers. If they can keep it alive, Prince Alfred, they can't. It's a terrific oh. effort by Paynham. Well done, and a beautiful Pinoho. kick too. Good football, Paynham. Nice kick over the top, if you don't mind. That's landed in the eyes of Cooper Young. He's a left footer, I reckon, Phil. Yes, goes on. Oh, he's just popped it in the air. He's asking a lot of Viney. And they're good enough again. <laughs> Both sides' defences, although that clearing kick is not great. It's again taken by Cooper Young. Lower the eyes this time, son. He does that. Just puts it in the air, but good enough. Good enough, if you don't mind. I think it's Viney. Harrison Viney. And he's going to be lining up for goal number three. If Payne and win, I have my player of the day. Right, That work by Pinojo to win that hard ball at centre-half back. Set up this forward sortie. Okay, so Todd Pinojo. If Paynham get up. If Paynham get up, folks. If Phil's called it already. Yep. Harrison Viney, been really important today. Ball hasn't been down there for a while. Both back lines have been under the pump but have held up exceptionally well this quarter. For goal number three, you can look at it from directly behind him. About 45 metres out. Looks good off the boot. Holds its line. And boy, oh boy, is this a cracking game for game one of season 2022. That's his third. Paynham level the score. 8-7 apiece. Wowie, wowie, wowie. Really need a Lambo at this point to go and chat to our goal umpires and just confirm this score. Says level. You have a feeling that scoreboard's wrong, don't you? Yeah, and I've got a lot of self-doubt. So we'll see what happens. Prince Alfred, 15 tackles to paint him. Six for the quarter. Kenzie's had five. Sawford's had four. Well, that is Prince uh, Paynham's first goal in the final quarter. Kicked it forward to the Princes. Hot footy, 30 out. That's a Great clearance kick. and they're away. Wasting no time is McKenzie. A hugely penetrating kick inside forward 50 into the wind. Paynham have it. They've got a loose player. If it can get to Ansel, it won't. It's by the boundary line at the southern end of the ground where it spills out of bounds. Scoreboard's been changed, Phil. Ah, uh, well, there you go. So it's one in favour of Prince Alfred. Right. You reckon okay. that's right? I I'm lost. <laughs> I am totally and utterly lost with that scoreboard. All I know is I'm not going to call this game until the goal umpire's way flags at the end of it. Can you have a look at the scoreboard attendant and tell, tell me if she's awake or he's awake over there? Would the match official to our right know? Would they have an idea? Yeah, probably. Actually, you call some footy. Okay. So ball spills off the top. An opportunity for, for a pain. Not good enough. Prince Alfred got the numbers. Although a good second effort occasion by Theo results in a another restart. And so good defensive pressure by the forward line of Paynham. Uh, yeah, Paynham there results in another ball up. Here we go. Over the top. It's Pitt that ends up with the ball. Just bangs it on his boot, searching for the boundary line, and that's what he's found. So a little bit of pressure relieved. Both sides. Got players behind the ball here. 
Pitt is certainly keeping himself in the back part of the game now. And why wouldn't you, an experienced player? Umpire seen that one over the uh, shoulder. Todd Panojo's had a good game. Mm. Up against Sam Buckham, who's equally had a terrific game for Prince Alfred in his first pit. Marks should have marked that. Just looked like it was a mark, but in the end, dropped it. And what have you got for us, Phil? Um, nothing official, but I'm not the only one questioning it. Right, OK. So no. <laughs> stay tuned, folks. The scoreboard may not be accurate. You can tell the game's going to go at least 25 minutes. Here we go. Payton lowers the eyes again. Beautiful. They've done that well this quarter. Matty Knight. Long kick in towards Viney. Oh, he's put it in beautifully. See what they Harrison Rooney, he's making his presence felt in the Adelaide Football League with his fourth goal for the afternoon. Welcome to the Falcons. Harrison Viney, you've put your boys in front. Well, that's uh, put the scoreboard issue no longer an issue for the moment. Thank goodness. And uh, what a wonderful steady for Payneham. It reminds me a lot of this game last year where Princes were on the verge of winning, had a five-goal lead, and Payneham come roaring back. Not as... Much of a margin to overcome. Last six inside 50s all by Payne and Phil. And it was after that play of the day moment by Panojo. That, that switched, the, that flipped the switch. Righto, Jolly from Prince Alfred comes at it, but Payne and first there. Now they've got numbers, Payne, uh, Prince Alfred. They come through Tom Sumner. Direct Riley Robinson gets it on the boot quickly. Heads to full forward. Can they stand up here? Off the ground, numbers are there! He's in the boost, if you don't mind! Oh, gee whiz, it would have gone in front by a point. It's Prince Alfred, eight goals, seven of Paynham, nine goals, six. The margin is, what's that, Phil? I don't know. I'm okay. Five points. Well, Josh Gurrell's had the chance to kick his third goal in the soccer shot, which is what you do. Now, the scoreboard says it's four points. Regardless of any issues with the scoreboard, there is no doubt that right now, Paynham Norwood Union are in front. And there's 23 minutes being played, folks. At least two minutes to go, but I wouldn't say much more after that. It sits in the half-forward flank for Princes. They trail, but they don't have the ball. They have a stoppage. A ball up right in front of our cameraman is getting right in the middle of the thick of it. Check out the action happening there. <laughs> and then the crowd's getting involved now, aren't they? Here's the volume's gone to another level. Dowward. McNamara on the left boot. Can he keep it in? Just. The skipper, Giannini, punches the ball beautifully. Out of bounds. Okay, we've got to sort out our award winners, Jacko. I'll be well, right. Think about it. You got it? Yep. Okay. You got mine, and you got yours in your head. Yep. Okay. All right. Of course, some footy. Trengove tackled by Sawford. That's been a well, two of the giants today so far. It's going to sit with Sanzo. He's going to get a clearing kick at the moment. That's all that matters. Takes a wonderful right hand turn for the boundary line. Burns a bit more clock. Yours was Panoho, wasn't it? Panoho and the get on at the uh, about centre half back. That flipped the switch, led to a lot of inside 50s in a row for the Falcons. 24 and a half minutes gone. Darwood comes in as the third man up for the ruck. Paint him in kick, front. Okay, they found the free for pushing the back. That's on Sawford. I'm not sure if we're at keepings off yet. <laughs> He's trying to get a 50 there. Umpire says time off, and that's not a bad way to calm things down. Just nobody is calm here at the moment, nor should they be. <laughs> Local footy is back, the Adelaide Footy League round one. And what a game to start, what we hope will be a massive season. Sawford's high kick, big pack descends. Off hands, no one can clear it. It's by the boundary, will be a throw in in front of the Prince's coaching box. Just hope we're going to be able to hear the siren at game's end. It could happen at any time. 25 and a half minutes gone. In the middle. Tough ball oh, to get. He's oh, back he it. One of their best players had a critical fumble. Now it's a hard footy on the centre wing. If Payne and hold on, I reckon they're almost there. They do. Got it Graham would be a ball up. Me. He's just not been from one of trying. He's had a terrific game, but that was... a. Uh, was one he needed to take cleanly. 
Giles the tap. It's holding the ball. It's right. No. Umpire says go. It goes to the boundary. Good kick. Is that the siren? Is that the siren? No. The crowd's reacting as if it is. It's not. It's a home siren. We should know pretty soon. Margin at the moment. Four points in favour of the home side. Can they hang on? Sounds like the siren to me. No. Keep teasing. <laughs> Into the half forward line. If this goes over the top, they're in trouble. Does it well, Prince Paynham? Oh. This one is out on the fall, though. This could no. be the last opportunity. No doubt about that one. You want some players running from behind. Long down the line. There's a big mark from, from Prince Yav. Ball spills forward. They've got the numbers there. Now it's Buckham around the corner. Does it nicely. Can Riley Robinson be a hero? Yeah. Oh, he cannot! We cannot. What a game of footy. Jacko, time to be Lambo. Who's the best on ground from? The award from? The new award? Okay, the new award is from a New Balance $100 voucher. New Balance. And it's the Mawson Lakes and Simon Black Academy. Uh, Mosley Bar and Kitchen. Yep, Mosley Bar and Kitchen. All right, what a game. All right, um, let's... <laughs> We'll get the goal umpires to meet. We'll confirm the final score, but there's no doubt that Paynham Norwood Union have won. We'll get Jacko and Alejandro to sort out the prizes. Okay. All righty. Goal umpires are meeting. This bit I want to actually just keep an eye on here to get you the correct final score. No doubt Paynham have won, though. And what an effort. Pre-game, we would have written them off and said, nah, there's no way. Too many changes. Five players from last year's grand final side, and yet there is going to be a change to the scoreboard. Not that it will make a heck of a difference, but I reckon two points to Prince's are going to go to Paynham, maybe, or Prince's score is going to reduce by two. Well, it's going to change in Paynham's favour. What a win. Let me go through some goal scorers for you. For Paynham Norwood Union, Viney with four, Campbell with two, Young, Clem and Matthias uh, one apiece. With um, Prince Alfred, uh, two to Garrell, singles to Slee, Pitt, Murdoch, Wicks and Jolly. We are changing the scores as we speak. Uh, Paynham Norwood Union have been given a point. They are 9-7. That is 61, and Prince Alfred uh, going to 8-7. So yeah, what was a initially a four-point win was actually a six-point win to Paynham at the end of the day. What a game. Sean Jackson, as we speak, you can see um, he's going down to find some winners. First thing he's got to do is break that huddle. That might take a little bit of an effort. And then we'll have a couple of on-ground interviews. Hopefully he's got a mic. <laughs> yes, just checking. Um, some of the other games uh, being played today. Brighton and Goodwood, Teacher Galley, Old Ignatians, Port District, Glenunga, St. Peter's, Ross Trevor. Um, Princes, oh look, they'll be disappointed. Um, it's a long season. Second time this year that uh, the second time in successive years, sorry, they've came to Paynham and lost narrowly. Um, didn't stop them winning the Premiership, and I'm sure they'll uh, rebound uh, in their next outing, which I should add, they'll be at home next week to uh, play Old Ignatians, Paynham Norwood Union. I'll tell you, I don't know who did their schedule. <laughs> Actually, I do. Uh, they get the, uh, the, premier, the Premier's first up, and then they get uh, Goodwood Saints, the team they beat in the prelims. So... Um, they're getting a roaring reception off of the field as they deserve. Jacko's. Uh, they're going to go in, I think. Anyway. I think we might have to let them sing the song and come back up. Might be the way we're going to do it. Do it. Does that mean we're going to take a break in a sec, Alejandro? Okay. We'll take a breath. We'll take a break. What a game of footy. What a start to the season. 
Um, it was, in the end, the final score, it was a Paynham by six points over Prince Alfred Old Collegians. We'll take a break. We'll come back with our post-game awards and a wrap-up analysis from Jacko. Back after the break. Simon Black Academy is a three-pillared program that combines both education and Australian rules football. Available in four states throughout Australia, the program covers three key areas. The first is an education component through the Torrens University. The second is the development of the participants AFL skills, helping the player to become the best player they can possibly be. And the third is a leadership and growth program. The Academy is a perfect opportunity for participants who like football, they get exposed to AFL coaches and mentoring opportunities as they do their university degree. Based down at Nord Oval and the Ark at Campbelltown, it is a fantastic program for anyone interested in sports management who loves football and wants to extend their education with a Torrens University degree. Feel free to check out the website simonblack.com.au. Simon Black Academy is a three-pillared program that combines both education and Australian rules football. Available in four states throughout Australia, the program covers three key areas. The first is an education component through the Torrens University. The second is the development of the participants' AFL skills, helping the player to become the best player they can possibly be. And the third is a leadership and growth program. The Academy is a perfect opportunity for participants who like football, they get exposed to AFL coaches and mentoring opportunities as they do their university degree. Based down at Nord Oval and the Ark at Campbelltown, it is a fantastic program for anyone interested in sports management who loves football and wants to extend their education with a Torrens University degree. Feel free to check out the website simonblack.com.au.
Simon Black Academy is a three-pillared program that combines both education and Australian rules football. Available in four states throughout Australia, the program covers three key areas. The first is an education component through the Torrens University. The second is the development of the participants' AFL skills, helping the player to become the best player they can possibly be. And the third is a leadership and growth program. The Academy is a perfect opportunity for participants who like football. They get exposed to AFL coaches and mentoring opportunities as they do their university degree. Based down at Norwood Oval and the Ark at Campbelltown, it is a fantastic program for anyone interested in sports management who loves football and wants to extend their education with a Torrens University degree. Feel free to check out the website simonblack.com.au. Alrighty, welcome back. Well, what a game, Jacko, and the post-game scenes down there had to be seen to be believed. We did have some award winners, um, but we don't have any of them that want to talk to us. So, <laughs> who do we give the awards to? Yeah, we were lost without Lambo, aren't we, to rustle them into yeah. the rustle the players in it. Uh, three awards. So, to, for those watching the game, uh, there'll be three awards each week. The first award is the Simon Black Football Academy Play of the Day, and we went with number 17 from Payne, Todd Panoho. Last quarter, terrific effort. Uh, the half-back line, which he st when he stood under the footy, turned the ball over for Payne and it went down the other end. They scored a goal at a crucial part of the game. So well done to Todd. He wins the Simon Black Academy Play of the Day. And for that, he wins... He wins the Powerade, the Archie Sandals. Yep, Powerade and the Archie Sandals. Who was our best on ground, Jacko? We'll leave the best on ground okay. until last. The Mosley player, team player of the day goes to Matt Nye, number seven. Yep. I think it was the third quarter, wasn't it, in the middle, Phil, when he stood there underneath a crunching aerial contest and wore the brunt of it and then got up and made another equally hard contest in the centre of the ground about 30 seconds or a minute later. Showed some real courage, so well done to Matty Nye. He wins the Mosley Bar and Grill $100 voucher, Phil. Team player of the world, I'll tell you, if no one comes out to collect Jacker, that'll be yours and ours. We'll be and we're in about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> We're heading down uh, the Mosley, we folks. We sampled the Mosley Bar and Kitchen, and we'll, we'll take a voucher any time. We did indeed. And the best player today, new player of the club, Ben Sawford. Well, they had a pretty quiet second quarter. I thought his start to the game was fantastic, and he's finished the game equally. When the game was there to be won, he stepped up in the last quarter, had a fair bit of the ball. He wins the New Balance $100 voucher plus the dartfish beanie, which is a collector's item. So, Ben Sawford, welcome to the Adelaide Football League and the Paynham Norwood Union Football Club. What a terrific win to start the season. Congratulations to Jeremy Cheney and all the boys, and that has breathed some real life into the competition. Just some very quick scores elsewhere. Tea Tree Gully finished strong. Six goals to one in the final quarter. They ran over Old Ignatians by oh, 18 I got that points. One right. And I mentioned that Glenunga had kicked three goals straight until half time. They ended with three goals, three for the game. Port District ran away with it, 9-5-57, to win by 36 points. For St Peter's, Ross Trevor, Brighton, Goodwood Saints results. Check the Adelaide Footy League website. Sunday mail tomorrow. I reckon about 4 or 5 o'clock tomorrow, the weekly wrap, you might see a familiar face. Jacko, any final thoughts on this contest before we, we Oh, wrap cracking it game. Up? I'm really pleased we got to do this game as the first game of the year, folks. It was a, it was a game that ebbed and flowed, and either side could have won the game, but terrific 
by Paynham Norwood Union under, under siege. The fact that they only had five players that played the day that played in the last game of the year. Massive turnover of players. Obviously, COVID hit them late. Some interesting heart, uh, end of uh, game stats. In fact, let's not worry about the stats, Phil. What a day. What a day to be a football supporter, and football purist. The Paynham Norwood Union Football Club will be alive tonight. If you're down this side of town, folks, get down and have a cool drink. I'm just relieved there was an issue with the scoreboard. It wasn't true. But the final margin, Jacko, was actually six points. Six in, points, in was it? In favour right. of Paynham Norwood okay. Union. It was four, but they had moved some things the wrong way around. All righty. We're done. Any final words? See you all next week, folks. I'm not sure where we are. Where are we next week? We're at week? Glenunga next week. Glenunga, Glenunga and St. Peter's. Going to be a big day. Uh, some legends of the club as they celebrate being in Division 1. But, of course, before that, between the posts, dissects everything, you and Tony Neal. Yep. Well, uh, that'll be released on Wednesday nights, folks. So uh, I know it's, you probably can't wait. There's three or four sleeps to go. Just keep a lid on it. It's like Christmas every week. Yeah. You know about the best thing about round one, Jacko? What? It's over. We get to do it all again next week. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. folks. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the broadcast. We certainly enjoyed bringing it to you. See you next week. Good night from Paynham Oval. <laughs>